Daytona, USA. You're watching the NASCAR ESPN2 Marathon. I'm Bob Jenkins along with Benny Parsons, and I asked you earlier, Benny, about why people like to go to Bristol. I think the finish of that race kind of says it all. <laughs> now you understand, folks, what's so exciting about Bristol. Earnhardt fought his way through the traffic twice on a racetrack that's very difficult to pass. It almost almost was able to win the thing. But Terry Labonte, have you ever seen a more torn up car in Victor Lane in your life? Absolutely not. It's not one that you would want to put in Daytona, USA, for example. <laughs> I mean, that was not a fender bender. That was a hard, hard lick that he took into the outside retaining wall. It sure was. Well, in 1995, Jeff Gordon, of course, went on to win the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship. We move ahead now to 1996 and March of that year at Richmond, the Pontiac Excitement 400, and Benny, the first thing I think of when I think of this race is cold weather. <laughs> Boy, was it cold. I, you know, I told our camera people, our audio people, all the folks on ESPN that was outside that day, you and I were pretty comfortable in the booth, but the guys on pit road and all the other guys, what a great job they did, because I don't think you at the viewer at home watching this tape will realize just how brutal it was that day, about 40 degrees with a strong wind yeah. and no sun. It was miserable. A lot of wind chill that day. For this race in uh, March of 1996, it's an all Hendrick front row. That's right. Jeff Gordon, Terry Labonte sharing the front row. And this is going to be, folks, one of the best races of 1996. A lot of lead changes. Very, very competitive race. The Pontiac Excitement 400, March 3rd, 1996. Stay tuned for that as the NASCAR Marathon continues here on ESPN2. ESPN welcomes you live to Richmond International Raceway in Virginia. It's sunny but cool in Richmond as 40 cars and drivers get set for the third race of the 96 season. The cool weather has not kept the fans at home. They're ready for the Pontiac Excitement 400. After two races, there are several who finished in the 95 season top 25 in points that are not in the current top 25. It's a rather long list. And notice at the bottom is the defending NASCAR Winston Cup champion who comes into this event 43rd in the points. Last year, he was on top of the heap. But he and his teammate are up front today. Here's Dr. Punch. Well, Bob, for the second week in a row, it's an all-Hendrick front row. They're hoping not to duplicate the double DNF a week ago. Terry Levani has led the most laps in both events this year, but has yet to go to victory lane. That could change today. Remember, he won this race a year ago. Now, teammate Jeff Gordon needs some kind of break. 42nd and 40th, his first two starts. He's 43rd in the points, and he comes to the racetrack in this race where he had his worst finish in all of 1995. He finished 36th in the opener at Richmond. These two guys need a break, but back in the field are a couple guys who have gotten all the breaks. Their names are Dale and Dale. Let's go to John Turner. Back here in the 11th spot, Dr. Jerry Punch, you got Dale Jarrett. Brand new race team. They come right out of the box, win Daytona, and then finish second at Rockingham last week to Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt here at Richmond has 24 top five finishes, five career victories. And Bill Weber right now, he and Jarrett are tied atop the Winston Cup standings. And John, there are a lot of surprising names in the top 10 in the Winston Cup point standings and a lot of surprises in the top 10 in qualifying here at Richmond. There are 152 victories among the top 10 drivers, but those victories are split among five drivers. The other five drivers in the top 10 have no wins, but great references. For instance, Kenny Wallace, multiple winner in the Bush Series and a Bush Series runner-up. Then in this row, you have Joe Nemechek and across from him, Steve Grissom, a couple of Bush Series champions in earlier years. Row three has lots of experience with Elliott and Martin. And in row two, starting fourth, Ricky Craven, rookie of the year last year in Winston Cup and a former champion of the Bush Grand National North Series. A lot of young talent mixed in with the veterans, Jerry Punch. Indeed, Bill, and for the second week in a row, Pontiac qualifies third. This is a Pontiac Excitement 400, and you know, Pontiac hasn't won this race since 89. A Richard Petty owned Pontiac hasn't won since 1983. And this driver, Bobby Hamilton, has never won a Winston Cup race. People thought that would change last week. And then suddenly, on lap 345, came the tap right here. And suddenly the most recognizable color scheme in all of NASCAR history was embroiled in controversy. Now we talked to both drivers to try to put a wrap on the tap, and here's what they had to say. 
Well, you've had five days. Uh, any opinion changed any on the incident at Rockingham? That's a great win. Been a, been a good week for us. Is there any way the accident with Hamilton could have been avoided? Well, as <laughs> Benny, I mean, we bumped a little. He got in the wall. Uh, I didn't wreck him. Well, you know, Dale and I were just swapping lead quite a bit, and we was taking air off one another, and uh, he come out of the pits in front of me, and so I passed him. He come back and passed me his famous Earnhardt move, and then so I done a famous Earnhardt move on him. I passed him back the next lap, and uh, we come up out of the hole, coming out of four. What I mean, coming out of the hole, you know how it comes up out of the hill there and turn four. And uh, I was wide open, you know. I, he loosed me up a tad, and probably enough to haze the tires up, whatever. And he just punted me. You know, Jarrett got into me, and I saved my car. I mean, guys got into each other all day long and wrecked each other. And uh, you know, uh, Labonte wrecked because of a, somebody bumped him from the rear, knocked him out of the race. Have you had a chance to talk since then? I mean, you two uh, discuss anything? Not really. Uh, I seen him. He talked. I listened for about two minutes and I walked off. He's still talking, but you know, I want to tell you what I like Dale a lot. I've, all, I've always figured him be a pretty good friend and all that. And the, my only complaint was, and complaints don't mean a lot in racing, is uh, you know that guy's the best race car driver in the world. I've seen him go through wrecks at Daytona and never touch anything. I've seen him pass cars and never touch anything. And then all of a sudden you're just one on one, and then it happens. And when you don't think a guy ever makes a mistake, when something like that happens, you put the mistake out of your mind. I hate it happen. Teddy's got a good race team. Hamilton's a good driver. It's, it's over and done with. Yeah, that one can't be undone now. Let's get on with this one today. And one of the guys we have to watch is Rusty Wallace. A fantastic record on short tracks in the last 27 short track races. That's tracks that are under one mile in length. Rusty Wallace has finished in the top five 25 times, including 11 wins. Even though he had to change engines after yesterday's practice, I still think that he'll be a strong contender here today. And then another car that'll be a contender, Ernie Irvin. The last time he was here in the spring of 1994, he won the race. But Friday afternoon, going in turn three, just before qualifying, bam! He locks up the brakes, in the wall he goes. They go to a backup car. We can see the damage to that automobile. They bring out the backup car. He makes one lap. He qualifies 38, but he comes back on Friday, on Saturday morning, and will qualify and start 26th. Ernie Irvin could be a contender here this afternoon. We are here at Richmond for the first time since 1983. You wouldn't even recognize the place from then. The amount of effort and money that the Sawyer family, the county of Enrico, and the uh, city of Richmond have put into this track is absolutely unbelievable. It is indeed a showcase for NASCAR racing, and we are delighted that we could begin our Winston Cup coverage here this afternoon. The green flag is scheduled at 1.15 Eastern time, and we'll be back with more in a moment. Standing by now as the national anthem is about to be presented prior to the start of this 400 lap race here at Richmond International Raceway. With our national anthem sung by Officer Scott Trickett of the Henrico County Police Department. Oh, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting.
Now for the most dramatic words in the world of professional sports, our Grand Marshal, Mike Mitchler. Gentlemen, start your engines. cars fire to life here getting set for our afternoon of racing at Richmond International. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Bob, one of the reasons for the popularity of this racetrack with the viewers at home and the fans here is that it's a combination of the intimacy of side-by-side -side short track racing and the nose-to-tail 150 mile an hour straightaway speed draft of a super speedway. But it is that combination that can pose a problem for the competitors, as we saw yesterday during the Bush Grand National Race. With more, here's Bill Weber. Well, Jerry Goodyear would love to design a tire that would last a fuel stop here at Richmond, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. You have to find a happy marriage between traction and wear. A fuel stop here is about 120 laps, but on these tires here, the guys are looking to go about 60, 70, maybe 80 laps today. Yesterday in the Bush Series, we saw considerable wear on the front tires. These cars are heavier and faster, but you have better drivers and perhaps better handling race cars today. We'll have to see what happens. John Kerr Bill, the one thing you want to have in your pit, lots of tires, and just about everybody does. I checked with Goodyear today, just about everyone got seven, eight sets of fresh tires, and back on the truck, if they run out of those, hey, there are more Goodyear Eagle GT radials back there in the garage area. They can mount them up. You're going to keep the cars running on pit road for a while and then take four warm-up laps on this cold Sunday afternoon before the green flag. Welcome back to Richmond International Raceway in Virginia as we're just moments away from the start of the Pontiac Excitement 400. There's Jeff Gordon who is pensively waiting for the cars to move away. It's a little cold here as we said and so they're letting the cars warm up. There's uh, Terry Labonte. Here's Kyle Petty who's set to go in his Pontiac. There's Ricky Craven, who's looking for a good finish after uh, his best finish ever in NASCAR Winston Cup competition last week. And there's Bobby Hamilton, who goes from third starting position here this afternoon. In fact, let's take a look at the entire starting lineup. On the pole will be Terry Labonte, qualifying at 123.728. And alongside his teammate, Jeff Gordon, same front row as last weekend at Rockingham. In the second row, it'll be Bobby Hamilton, and Ricky Craven, starting third and fourth. Fifth and sixth will be Mark Martin in car number six and Bill Elliott in the 94 McDonald's Ford. Next row, we find Steve Grissom and alongside Joe Nemechek. Back in row five, Dale Earnhardt will be on the inside and Kenny Wallace, great start for Kenny, on the outside. In row six, we have Dale Jarrett and on the outside, the old man, Darrell Walter. And in row seven, we have Ken Schrader in the Budweiser Chevrolet and Rusty Wallace in the Miller Ford. Row number eight is made up of Ted Musgrave in the Family Channel Ford and Sterling Marlin, two-time Daytona 500 winner in the Kodak Chevrolet. Row number nine, we find Wally Dallenbach and Rick Mast. Jeff Bodine will start in the 19th position and he'll be going all the way, unlike he did last week because of the broken ribs. Outside of that row will be Elton Sawyer. Row number 11 is Jeff Burton and Morgan Shepard. And in the 12th row, Robert Presley to the inside and Brett Bodine outside. Mike Wallace, who finished fourth yesterday in the Bush Grand National Race, will start inside row 13. And Ernie Irvin, fastest qualifier, outside him. Row 14, Derry Coat, main and tail car, and Ward Burton, who's off to a terrible start in 1996. Needs to get it turned around. Jeremy Mayfield and Jimmy Spencer next. And in the 16th row, we find Hutt Strickland and Dave Marcus. Dave having a good year so far. Row number 17 is Johnny Benson fighting pneumonia here today. And Ricky Rudd in the tied Ford. Row number 18, 
we find the Michael Waltrip sit go Ford and Kyle Petty's Coors Light Pontiac. And the four drivers who took provisionals to get in, Bobby Labonte and John Andretti. And in the 20th row, starting 39th and 40th, it's Lake Speed and Bobby Hillen. And uh, Johnny Benson, as Ned mentioned, is suffering from pneumonia, and the car doesn't appear to be running very well. And he's got bigger problems with pneumonia right now. Yeah, it just apparently wouldn't fire. David Green standing by to jump in as a relief driver if Johnny thinks that he needs one. And that car has still not started. They're going to push it around to the garage area and evidently change some of the electrical system in the car because it still hasn't. John Kerner, what's wrong? Well, I just talked to David Green, who is standing by the relief by d relief drive if needed, and he told me that Johnny says it feels almost as if either something's wrong with the transmission, it's not getting in the gear, the drive shaft may not be connected, it just will not get in the gear, it will not go for him. So they're going to have to bring it down here and get it fixed behind the wall. Okay, so it must not be an engine problem then, just uh, there's something wrong with the drive train. Hmm. A couple of more laps before we get the green flag. We can't emphasize, overemphasize how cold it is, but one thing we do have to mention is the fact that it didn't keep one single person away. I don't see any seat available in this beautiful facility as all seats are filled. They're ready to see some racing. And the 18 car is now catching up to the uh, rear of the field, as is Bobby Hillen. He might have stopped, he might have slowed down just to be able to run that half lap to get the tires warmed up because that first lap is going to be critical. Cameron inside on top of the Goodrich Chevrolet of Dale Earnhardt. Also Mark Martin, the Valvoline Ford has the same camera on the roof of the automobile. It's Bobby Hamilton and a roof cam on the STP Pontiac. And the King Richard Petty. He's watching television. He isn't watching the race car. Yeah. Turn around, Richard, wave to us. <laughs> <laughs> and Kyle Petty is set to go here this afternoon, starting from the 36th position. There is the Family Channel car driven by Ted Musgrave that will also be carrying a roof cam. And it's, you know, we keep talking about how cold it is here. Really and truly, it's about 45 degrees, but the wind is blowing about 25 miles per hour. So wind chill has a temperature of probably 25, 30 degrees. That's what these crew members are feeling. And I tell you, pit stops are going to be critical today because their hands are going to be frozen. Oh, thank you. Keep your hands in your pocket down there, guys. <laughs> Need to get them some of those little things that they use in golf. If you can get the golf shop and uh, keep your hands warm. More on Johnny Benson from uh, John. Well, Bob, it is the drive shaft not hooked up to the rear end gear. They sent a crewman into the garage area to get a U-bolt and a yoke. They're working on the car right now. The pace car coming by. These cars still getting warmed up out on the racetrack. Johnny Benson sits in his car helplessly. They're waiting, hoping they can get it fixed before this race goes green. But the pace lights are off atop the pace car, so it should be one to go. Evidently, they changed the gear in that car this morning, and when they put the drive shaft back in, they just slid it up in the rear end yoke and did not put the little U-bolt that hold it in and it fell out. There is a loop uh, that keeps the drive shaft from dragging on the ground. It probably fell down against that. That's why it didn't fall out. And they push these cars through inspection, push them out onto the start finish line so it's never fired until they get ready to start the race after that so they wouldn't have known it. While Benson sits on pit road and the crew works on the Pennzoil car, the field is set to get the green flag. The pace car is in uh, turn number three. Only three went home from here. Dick Trickle driving Loy Allen's car. Also Randy McDonald and Robbie Banker. There's the huge crowd on hand here this afternoon for the third race of the 96 season. Our first NASCAR Winston Cup telecast, and we're ready to go. out of the pit area, but he's a lap down as the battle up front is underway. Labonte has taken the lead, but look at Bobby Hamilton getting past Jeff Gordon for second. And now Hamilton has his sights set on the lead. Boy, he went into that turn very hard, slipped a little bit. A little bit of momentum he had, but he's coming right back. 
Mark Martin and Ricky Craven are running together on the racetrack for fourth. From the roof cam on Bobby Hamilton's car, you can see how close he is to the leader, Terry Labonte, as Mark Martin tries to get underneath Ricky Craven back there for fourth position, and Hamilton again bids for the lead. He's got a nose up there. And Labonte's going to give him that room because it's too early in the race to really be contesting these spots, and Hamilton, I think, is going to take the lead in the STP Pontiac. Yes, he is the leader. Continued where he left off last week. Side by side, Mark Martin takes a spot away from Ricky Craven. That's the fourth position. Martin in fourth, Craven fifth, and it's Bill Elliott, Steve Grissom, Dale Earnhardt, Joe Nemechek, Kenny Wallace, and Dale Jarrett. Look back on Craven from Mark Martin's camera. That's in the rear bumper of the Valvoline Ford. Here's Brett Bodine in the 11 car to the inside of Daryl Walter, or rather Ricky Rudd, trying to get to the inside as a whole bunch of cars now are side, be, uh, side by side behind that. And some of them are trying to use that high groove, Bob, in, in making passes back in that area. Kyle Petty tried to look on the inside of Brett Bodine, but Brett was using that low groove. Mike Wallace trying to go on the outside of Kyle Petty, the Heilig Myers car. Alec Myers is based here, and, and Rick, Jeff Gordon takes over the second spot from his teammate, Terry Labonte. Gordon making the move in turns three and four, going to the inside of Labonte. So now it's Bobby Hamilton, who led 36 laps last week at Rockingham up front. And Gordon in second, and some great battling going on toward the rear of the pack. Kyle Petty leading this group into turn one. Mike Walsh was on the outside last lap. This side, he's on the inside and takes the spot away from Brett Bodine. There comes Dave Marcus on the inside, John Andretti. And look at Benson go, made it three abreast. Took the spot away from Hutt Strickland. That's Hutt in the eight, the red number eight. Lake Speed, the blue number nine on the outside. And Michael Waltrip and Bobby Hillen are bringing up the tail end of that pack. And Benson has a lot of room to make up, but he's trying to do it. He goes to the inside there of John Andretti making it three wide. Ooh. Oh, we have contact. And Michael Waltrip spins in turn number four. And Strickland amazingly didn't hit him. And the caution still hasn't been thrown. Michael's waiting for the caution, and they're waiting for Michael. Finally, Michael wanted to get out of the way, of the, get out of the middle of the racetrack. He takes off, and there will be no caution play. But he does get lapped as we watch now Rusty Wallace and Daryl Waltrip go at it. Let's take a look at what happened back there in the fourth quarter as three wide racing was happening. And you just can't do that on this racetrack. It's wide enough, and Michael Waltrip sees that opening on the inside, but he runs in there and clips the car number 37 of John Andretti, and around he goes. Everybody else gets by, but it cost Michael a lap. And that was as close as uh, yesterday's incident between uh, Chad Little, Chad Little and, and the body. Man, oh man, that was awesome. Rusty Wallace takes his spot away. Look at that 2.85 average finish in the last 27 short track races. That is incredible. Dale Jarrett trying to move on the outside of Kenny Wallace. He's been trying to get by him on the inside for the last five or six laps, and now he decides to make the high move, and looks like it might work for him. Jarrett will take the position away from Kenny Wallace. Now Rusty Wallace moving up on the outside. Jarrett moving into 10th position, dropping Wallace back to 11th. Rusty said, come on, Herman. Come on, let me have a break here, Herman. Wallace and Wallace. They call Kenny Herman in the family. Sterling Marlin, Daryl Waltrip, and Ken Schrader coming up behind. Meanwhile, it's Bobby Hamilton who is leading this event, and the interval is about eight or nine car lengths between Hamilton and second place, Jeff Gordon. We're early in the Pontiac Excitement 400.
we got a lot going on here at Richmond. Ernie Irvin in trouble. Uh, Hut Strickland got into trouble. And Wally Dollenbach was an innocent victim. Now, here is the first incident that we had. The car involved in the first incident. That's Hut Strickland. He spun over in turn number two. Got the car in to get some uh, new rubber on it. There's damage to the left rear of Hut Strickland's Circuit, Circuit City car. And there's damage to the front of Ernie Irvin's Texaco Haviland Ford. And John Kernan is in Strickland's pit. Well, they've already replaced the right side tires now. Some crewmen pulling back on the left rear quarter panel. I tell you what, it's smashed up pretty good inside. They're going to have to do get a sledgehammer out or something and beat that thing in because uh, the left rear fender rubbing against the tire. They're going to have to get that clear before Hutt can go out. But he sits here on pit road already down a lap. Now the deck lid has come loose from the hinge, so they're going to have to push that down. They just got the good old-fashioned mess of that number eight Circuit City Ford. Let's go down to Ernie Irvin's pit. Well, these guys are going to work on the front right side. Heavy damage there. The hood is buckled. We'll try and bang that out. There's damage to the left side. He's obviously rubbed tires with somebody on the left side of the car. The tire on the left side is pinned in by the sheet metal, so they're going to have to pull that away before they can change tires. It looks like they're going to try and do the sheet metal repair, then send Ernie back out and bring him back around and do some more repair. Waiting for the pace car to come around. Ernie grabs the engine and he's on his way, but folks, he'll be back. Several other cars making pit stops, but uh, Irvin and Strickland repairing damage, as is the case with Wally Dallenbach. Now, here's what happened. The field had just gotten the uh, yellow flag, and Irvin just ran into Wally Dallenbach. It looked to me like, Ned. That's the way it looked, and this had nothing to do with Hutt Strickland other than the fact that the caution flag came out. Over here, there's Strickland spinning out on another part of the racetrack, and they came by and got the caution flag here, and, uh, and Ernie Irvin and... Wally Dallenbach got together. And Strickland is back in. And Ernie Urban also coming back into the pits to get repairs after this incident down in turn number one. We'll take another break and be right back with more from Richmond, Virginia. Just as you rejoin us, the cars cross the line and take the green flag for the restart. Now, Johnny Benson and Michael Waltrip are both positioned to the inside, trying to get their lap back, and Benson has. Yes, and both of them came in and put on four new tires. That should give them a little extra speed, and they look for this opportunity to get back in the lead lap. And you say Benson has. Michael Waltrip hasn't been able to get up there and pass the 43 car yet. It's still Benson uh, on the lead lap now, back in uh, 36th position. Bobby Hamilton is your leader. Michael Waldrop came up and looked like gave him a little bit of a bump there. Now he tries to go to the inside to get his lap back in the third turn. Is he going to be able to do it? Looks like he will. So now both Benson and Michael Waldrop are back on the lead lap. Hamilton is the leader, but now is getting a challenge from Jeff Gordon. And here's Rusty Wallace making a move. He got around Dale Jarrett back there in the pack. Rusty has moved up to the ninth position now. See Jeff Gordon on the back bumper of Bobby Hamilton. That's first. The 43 STP is the leader of the race. The 24, Jeff Gordon, is second. The yellow Benson and the red car, Walter, have on the tail end of the lead lap. There we see Earnhardt trying to go on the outside of Terry Labonte. Started ninth and is already up to third. Third position now, yeah. Passing Labonte, taking over that third spot. Here's Jerry with more on Bobby Hamilton. As a moment ago, Robbie Loomis radio his driver said, you know, easy does it, easy does it. Said, don't, don't abuse the car. Remember the tire concern. And Bobby said, I'm not, but I wanted to lead a few laps and then suddenly get comfortable. But I'm so comfortable up here leading and I'm really not punching the car. And Robbie said, fine, just be very careful with those front tires. We told you that Bobby Hamilton led 36 laps last week. He also led five laps in th on this racetrack last fall during the night race. Oh, Michael Waltrip and Johnny Benson came together. Oh, oh some heavy, heavy contact together. that time. And Benson spins right in front of the leader. Just kisses the wall. And there's no caution out yet. Yeah. Now there is. And Michael Waltrip is going to race death as hard as he can to get his lap back. Benson gets his car going, but he will lose one lap. 
just yeah. after he got back on the lead lap, he goes a lap down again. But Michael Waltrip is going to benefit from all this. Let's watch the race to uh, the line here. And yes, Michael Waltrip will be back on the lead lap. By the way, we mentioned that uh, Wally Dahlenbach was also involved in the incident earlier. He's behind the wall. This is the reason for the most recent caution. There we see the contact between the two cars as they go down in the corner, and Hamilton goes up and almost runs in the back of Michael Waltrip. Michael jammed on the brake trying to avoid Benson and almost got Hamilton in the deal. Not a whole lot of damage probably to Johnny Benson's car, but a little bit on the right side. Let's take a look at it from another angle. Watch the tires, watch the smoke when they make contact right there. We can see as the tires start rubbing the sheet metal, the smoke boil up and Benson jams on the gas and just barely makes contact with the wall. And all the cars, the whole field is making pit stops. My goodness. Just a few cars remain on the track, about seven of them. Everybody else is in for a pit stop. Here's Jerry Punch. Four tire change. This will give the crews a chance to look at the tire wear concerning about the right front and left front tire. The Jackman falls down here. Let's check it out in the Labonte pit with Bill. Four tire change for Jerry Labonte. Fuel's already in and the car is away. Now to you, Jerry. Left side tire is on the Bobby Hamilton car. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon's crew has already changed four tires. The defending series champion is down and away. Gordon is playing in his car, had a push going in and was very loose coming off the corner. They were going to make an air pressure adjustment on the front of the car. Now, figure out who's in front of that bunch there, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that's NASCAR's job. Let's take a look at uh, how Earnhardt got through this. And Mark Martin. Well, fortunately, the water sort of parted. The car that was spinning, Johnny Benson, went high. And they were able to just drive right under it. Ernie Irvin comes back into the pits for a stop. He completes his service and rolls back out. Here's John Kernan in Hut Strickland's pit. Just an update on Hut Strickland, who's been sitting here on pit road. The uh, left front shock was broken, the mount uh, there, and also the lower control arm bit on the left front. Hut still sitting here as a Felipe Lopez and the crew are trying to get that fixed up. Michael, well, I should say, the 30 car Johnny Vincent Jr. has taken on four tires and they've checked the toe out. Apparently, the toe has been knocked out on that car on the right front, so they have checked that and sent Johnny back out on his way. So while Hutt sits on pit road, the cars are still under caution on the racetrack, and we'll be right back. We've just gone green, have some new faces running up front. Jeff Bodine is the leader of the race. Running in second spot is Ward Burton, then Dave Marcus. Now the 28 car of Ernie Irvin is a lap down. Johnny Benson, we understand, has a possible bent A-frame on the 30 car because of his contact with the wall up to turn three and four. Now, some cars didn't pit. Jeff Bodine was one of those. Dave Marcus actually was the leader when Green came back out. He dropped back a little bit. He didn't pit. And uh, neither did the 22 car of Ward Burton nor Elton Sawyer in car number 27. A couple of other cars up there. There's Ken Schrader in the Budweiser Chevrolet. He only took on two tires. John Andretti only took on two. Most of the other front runners did take on four tires. And we see Earnhardt has been able to pass Jeff Gordon since the green flag has flown. Uh, Gordon was in front of him at the pit stop, but in traffic, Earnhardt was able to get by. Now Dale takes a position away from Elton Sawyer and brings Jeff Gordon along behind him. So now Earnhardt is in fourth and Jeff Gordon in fifth position. As the positions are changing up front, with some of the guys who came in and got some fresh tires are passing those that uh, are on old tires. Looking back from Mark Martin on to John Andretti and others. And Dale Jarrett there on the right. As we mentioned, Andretti only took on two tires, and that, uh, that might be telling on him a little bit. It gave him good track position. But, boy, the four tires, four new tires here at Richmond mean so much. Dale Jerry 
closes in right on the back bumper of Mark Martin. Mark gets on the gas, pulls away by a couple of car lengths as they come off the corner. Here's the battle for second place. Jeff Bodine, the leader of the battle for second, is between Ward Burton and now Bobby Hamilton has the STP car to the inside of Ward and takes the position rather easily into turn one. Irvin tried to move up there on the inside, couldn't quite get follow Bobby Hamilton through there. You see Earnhardt coming up there now on the outside. Earnhardt running in the fourth position. Ernie has position on Ward this time, going down in the corner. And Earnhardt also follows. Yeah, those tires that Ward Burton has on there, we're on lap 45 right now. And uh, they're beginning to get heated up and worn and just don't have the adhesion that newer tires have. Now Jeff goes by Ward Burton on the inside. Right now Ward. And here's a battle for the lead. Hamilton on the inside of Bodine. He will take the lead. that lap he was about a half a car length ahead of Bodine when they crossed the line and so Bobby Hamilton goes back on front on lap number 45. Now let's go back here and see if we can pick up some on some other battles. There's Ted Musgrave, Sterling Marlin, Elton Sawyer who was up front just a few laps ago and look how far he's gone back because of the worn tires. Also that's Robert Preston, the 33 car. After all this time I still won't say Harry again. <laughs> well, they, you can't blame some of some of the teams for trying that strategy of putting just two tires on to get the track position, which is very, very important on any racetrack, but especially a short track. But they'll rethink it now, and those others that saw them do it and see the effect that it's having on the race cars uh, just doesn't look like it's going to work. For more on it, let's go to Bill Weber in the pits. Similar strategy for Jeff Bodine, Ned. He stopped on the first caution of the race, came in, topped off with fuel, and got four tires. Qualified 19, was leading, currently gave that up, but still running at the front of the pack, running second with Ernie right behind him. So his tires aren't quite as old as some of those others then since he stopped on that first caution. And so that's, that's good strategy on his part. Yeah, the 22 Ward Burton also stopped on that first caution for lack of change tires. And that's one reason he was able to keep up as well as he was. And we see ooh, some very, very close racing between Steve Grissom, the 29 car. That's Dino speaks really hot as he comes off that corner. Trying to... <laughs> he had a close call earlier, and Ted Musgrave had the bird's eye view. Watch to the right there. Started to make it three abreast on the outside. Said, "No, I probably shouldn't do that." So he dives down in the corner on the inside, and uh, boom! Elton didn't realize he was going to be there. Some <laughs> contact. Presley, Schrader, Bill Elliott, Ted Musgrave. Probably charge down into these corners to this, uh, going down in turn one, probably at 140, 50 miles an hour there and slam on the brakes. Use a tremendous amount of brakes here at Richmond to slow these cars down. Good battle between the three and 24 cars for third position. Earnhardt has the third position. Jeff Gordon now wants it back. Well, nine is in second place in the seven car. Ernie Irving in the Texaco 28 car is a lap down. He's in 36th position. Here's some almost three abreast racing. Wallace, Schrader, and leading the charge, Ted Musgrave. And while that was happening, we watched that. So let me tell you that Jeff Gordon did, in fact, pass Dale Earnhardt for the third spot. And now he sets his sights on the seven car of Jeff Bodine running second. Meanwhile, Ernie Irvin has been able to get past Bodine, but he's still got a long way to go before he gets his lap back because Bobby Hamilton has checked out. Here's the battle for second. Oh, and Jeff Gordon is to the inside of Bodine, and I believe he's going to take the spot away. It's it, close. It is close. <laughs> I hate to have my finger between those two cars. 
now he's going to get the spot, and Dale Earnhardt will now try to and Dr. Punch. It's a good run for Jeff Gordon, Doc. Well, it's the kind of runs they had last year that led them to a championship. Bob, something we haven't seen, at least in 1996, out of Jeff Gordon. But the concern here was when they changed the tires, they were very concerned about the right front and left front tire. Ray Everham looked at the tire, looked at me, and his eyes got very wide open. He said, hey, that's just 32 left. And when he saw Gordon go by Earnhardt a moment ago, he radioed his young driver and said, hey, don't use it up too much early on. Save it. Let's save it. Let's go and check in with John Cronin who's standing by with Wally Dollarback. Well, Wally's uh, Hayes Modem Sport Thunderbird in the garage area, the rear end pushed back. Wally, a little help from behind, it looked like. Yeah, we had, uh, you know, we had a good car working. It was early in the race. It's pretty dumb when somebody runs into you after the yellow flag. You know, it's really unfortunate. Uh, it really is going to hurt us in the points and everything, but we'll be in Atlanta. All right, Wally Dolan back. He's out of the race for now. In fact, they just brought the car back to the truck. They're getting ready to load it up, guys. Boy, that is a tough break for Wally, who has had so many good runs here in the early part of the year. you got to think that this team is going to come together, and uh, you got to really think that they're going to be strong when they go to Sonoma in May. Rusty Wallace getting by Terry Labonte. Both these cars are two in the five. That's Rusty in the two and Labonte in the five. These cars run so well at this speedway. That is coming up, Jeff Bodine is running in fourth place. Rusty now fifth to Terry Labonte in sixth. 59 laps are completed here at Richmond International Raceway on a beautiful Sunday afternoon, despite the fact that it's a little bit cool and windy. Bobby Hamilton is your leader. We'll be right back. Excitement 400 from Richmond International Raceway in Virginia is being led by a Pontiac, and the driver is Bobby Hamilton, who started in third position and has been as low as seventh, but has led a total of 48 laps so far. He's about three seconds, a little over three seconds ahead of Jeff Gordon, who is running in second place. Bobby Hamilton's SPP Pontiac will really be working good here. He registered two top ten finishes here last year. He was ninth in this race a year ago, and he finished fifth in the fall race here at Richmond. His only top tens at Richmond in nine events. He walked out on the front row here at one of these races last year. So evidently the Petty crew knows something about Richmond. Well, they've all know, always known something about Richmond. They were very, very good even when this racetrack was half mile. There's Richard Petty who won so many times here. They were good when it was dirt. They were good when it was half a mile paved asphalt and now good on this one. He's won 13 times here at Richmond, has Richard Petty. Six in this event. Watching a Bram Field summary, and here's some battling going on. Uh, that's the 11 car of Brett Bonine. This is around 20, 20th, 21st, 22nd, something in there. Bobby Labonte in car number 18. Ricky Rudd in car number 10. Kyle Petty right behind them as they battle side by side. Steve. And yeah, yeah. Got some. He and uh, John Andretti made some contact down in the first and second corner. And Grissom goes up the racetrack and was able to get it back under control without spinning. What happened here, BP? There was the Andretti on the inside, the Kmart car. And a little bit of contact on the left rear, and Grissom goes up to chase the back end and almost chases it to the wall, but he finally catches it just before the wall. Does a good job with that. He's had a couple close calls already yes. today. There's Dino on the left rear quarter of the 29 car. That's the Cartoon Network. It's dropped him back to 18th position, Steve Grissom. Barney Rubbles on the right rear quarter, and Brett Flintstone on the hood. Here's Bill Elliott along with Ted Musgrave and John Andretti. This is 12th, 13th, and 14th. John Andretti started 38th. He was the first to qualify on Friday and ended up the second slowest. Had to take a uh, provisional to get in, and now look how far he has come, all the way up to 12th. Yes, he's one of those cars that Ned Jarrett talked about that just changed two tires, trying to get that track position. And man, has it worked for John Andretti. 
Eddie Hamilton still the 43 car leading the race. Just put a Michael Walter, the Sitco car, a lap down. There we see Bodine in the 11, Brett Bodine, and Kyle Petty in the 42. Rick Mast in the one car. That's a Pontiac this year. If you are not aware, also Hooters is a sponsor rather than the Skull folks. 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and 25th here. And Bobby Labonte in the 18, the green guard. And these guys are about uh, right. oh, a third of a lap in front of the leader, Bobby Hamilton, but he's coming up. He's, he's lapping some race cars out there. He just put a lap on Michael Waltrip and Elton Sawyer. Joe Nemechek has gone a lap down. Bobby Hillen and Dave Marcus. So Bobby Hamilton setting a pace out there that's putting a lot of cars a lap down. And a battle for fifth here. Jeff Bodine in the seven and Terry Labonte in the fifth. Labonte, of course, our pole sitter for this race. Last time you saw Terry Labonte, uh, which was about 10 laps ago, he was right behind Rusty Wallace. Well, Rusty, as you can tell by our hot scoring pilot on the left side of the screen, was able to get by Bodine and drive off by 15, 20 car lengths. But Terry Labonte's had trouble getting by. Yeah, in fact, Rusty Wallace might either be the fastest, if not the fastest, he's the second fastest car on the racetrack right now. He is uh, gaining on Dale Earnhardt, who is running in the third position. Even the game on Jeff Gordon. There he is. And this is how far he has come. Rusty Wallace starting the race in 14th position. By lap 15 had moved to 11th. Kept picking him off. And now on the 75th lap is fourth and looking for third as he goes to the inside of Dale Earnhardt. Oop, don't make it through your breast, Rusty. It won't work. Uh, he, he knew better than that. Looked tempting, though. It did look very tempting, that hole on the inside of Earnhardt. And we've got a crash. Jeff Bodine is in the wall in the QVC car up in turns one and two, and the caution is out. The car is up against the wall, and there won't be any other car involved. Looks like there will be some damage to the left rear. Yes, there is. Jimmy Spencer was about to go a lap down in 30th position, so the caution is a godsend for him. Let's take a look at how this incident happened up in turn number two involving Jeff Bodine in the QBC Ford. Well, we've seen Terry Labonte trying to get around Jeff, and he's not close to him there, but he does come down and clip the Dave Marcus car, number 71. They make contact, and it sends Jeff around and back into the wall. There's Sterling Marlin and Dale Jarrett both getting by. So, a tough break here for Jeff Bodine. And pit road is open, so those on the lead lap are going to be making their way to their respective pits to get some fresh tires and some fuel. And many of them will welcome this opportunity. They've been out there a little while on those tires. Jerry is in Bobby Hamilton's pit. Well, 37-year-old Bobby Hamilton brings the STP Pontiac in. 43, 24, and 3 stacked. As you watch them top to bottom, STP Pontiac, middle of your screen is the Gordon car with the Chevrolet, bottom of the screen, the Goodrich Chevy. Watching the crews now go to the left side, put left side tires on. Problems with the right rear a little bit on the 43 car. Now they come to the left side as they watch left side work being done. And Earnhardt is down and away, 23.4 seconds, 23 flat for Gordon. And a little bit of trouble with the right rear on the 43 car. That calls down for the last two and a half seconds here in the pit. And remember, they can only use two impact wrenches on these pit stops. That's why he had to go back around and change that left rear tire after he had trouble with the right rear. That's why the pit stop was a little bit slow. Here's uh, how the incident looked from Jeff Bodine, from uh, Mark Martin's in-car, actually, the roof cam up ahead. Well, you could hear Bodine's impact with the wall. He's back running, but there is damage to the rear end of that car. We'll take a break and be right back. Just as you return once again, the green flag comes out, and we are back to racing on lap number 85. And at the front of the field is Jeff Gordon with Rusty Wallace running second. Now, at this time last year, Jeff Gordon had already won a race at Rockingham. This is the first time that he has led a lap in 1996. Rusty Wallace is second, Earnhardt third. 
And Sean Parker, the tire changer, rear tire changer on the two car, I'm disappointed. He assured me this morning after the first pit stop that two car would be leading. They made two pit stops, and he's still only up to second place, Sean. That's still pretty good. Yes, it is. Bobby Hamilton is running fourth. We're watching from his roof cam. Now ahead is Michael Waltrip. However, he is a lap down in 31st. There are 30 cars on the lead lap. Michael gives Hamilton the room on the inside, and he goes by and tries to go forward. Let's check on tire wear with Bill Weber. Jeff Bodine was on 54 lap tires when he wrecked. This is his right front tire. You can see how badly this is torn up. Now, Jeff had not complained about the handling of his car because of the tires. He was dropping back in the field, but the team told me they're not really sure if that happened before Jeff went into the wall or on his way there. And, Bill, I would say that that was when the car, he locked up the brakes and slid the tire that caused that problem. That tire was not worn that way from his uh, 50 laps around this racetrack. Certainly a possibility, Benny. You can see they're still looking at it down here. When you stop these tires and slide them over the surface of the racetrack, it's almost like sandpaper. Just takes that rubber and peels it away. And it's called flat spotting sometimes, but uh, that was a little more than a flat spot. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of rubber on these tires to begin with. Yeah. And like Benny said, you lock them up a 3,400-pound race car on, a, on the, an abrasive racetrack. This racetrack has been through a harsh winter here at Richmond, Virginia, and uh, it's a little abrasive. When you say not too much, Ned, as a matter of fact, about one-eighth of an inch is all the rubber there is. Bobby Labonte and Robert Presley are battling for position. Meanwhile, Hamilton is about to take third and does take third from Dale Earnhardt. Well, let's watch this <laughs> and see how close they come on the racetrack. Well, it's not going to be close long because Bobby Hamilton's going to be gone. Man, that car is hooked up. It really is. You got to think that this is a winner soon in Winston Cup racing. Here's a Fram Field summary. Watch for your favorite driver. The numbers in parentheses indicate where they started. Rusty has come from 14th starting position to run second. And ready from 38th to 10th. We see Presley there, Robert Presley in the eighth spot. And I was told this morning that he has an awfully good car today. Here's John Andretti, Ted Musgrave, Bill Elliott. This is 10th, 11th, and 12th. this Robert Preston we see the green car has just gone past the four car of Sterling Marlin taking a spot away and they're still contesting this position yep. and Elliot is saying I wish somebody would win so we can get in line here <laughs> somebody do something yeah he, he don't know which one to follow it's Joe Nemechek coming along behind uh, Bill Elliott. Now, the 75 of Morgan Shepard is not on the same lap as those other cars. Morgan had just gone a lap down when the caution came out. He and him and Spencer were running together, and Spencer got a break and didn't get that, and Morgan did. And Nemechek is also on the same lap as uh, Andretti and Musgrave and Elliott. Yeah, Nemechek's car was really, the handle went away on it, and uh, he got lapped pretty early in that last green flag segment. Well, there are your top three, plus Johnny Benson, Gordon, Rusty Wallace, Bobby Hamilton, and not too far behind Hamilton is fourth place, Dale Earnhardt. There he is, moving to the inside of Johnny Benson, who is now 10 laps down after a bad start. There's the roof cam on the Goodrich Service Chevrolet. Now we switch to Bobby Hamilton. Oh, let's check out this battle that rages on between Andretti and Musgrave. Well, they're having a good time out there, aren't they? No, they're not because their <laughs> leaders are driving away while they're trying to contest this spot. Bill Elliott's not having a good time because he don't, still don't know which one to follow. See, here comes Musgrave up there again. Andretti's giving him plenty of room. Now he gets the spot. Yep. Wow, he had to work for that one, didn't he? And Rennie's 10th, Musgrave 11th, and Bill Elliott is 12th. There's your scoring pylon on the left. John Kernan has more on John Andretti's run so far. 
know, I was talking to Tim Brewer this morning, and he told me, hey, despite the fact they had to use a provisional to get in the field, they haven't changed a spring, a shock, anything on that car this weekend. It just so happened on their qualifying laps, apparently something uh, mismatched set of tires. Those happen to be the slowest laps they ran this weekend. Tim said he hoped that he gave me something to talk about today. Well, obviously, they have right now running near the top ten. And John seems to be pretty pleased with the car right now. 28 positions since the drop of the green flag from 38th to 10th. Well, we have a Chevy, a Ford, and a Pontiac. Top three. That's what I call parody. And there we have the lead change as Rusty Wallace takes the lead. The Miller Ford, and here comes Hamilton in the Pontiac. Taking second place away from Jeff Gordon. Is this the first time Rusty has led this year also? Could possibly be. Could be, yeah. Rusty has uh, five wins here at this racetrack, Bill. And he's got a brand new motor in that car today. They ran final practice, then something went through the oil pump, and Robin Preverton told me they found metal shavings in the oil filter. They changed motors this morning. They think they're going to be pretty good. When you ask Preverton how they're going to run, he usually just shrugs his shoulders. But this morning, before this race stopped, started, he smiled. He said, I think we're going to be pretty good here. Rusty won here last year and might be on his way to victory lane again this afternoon, and that would really help this team make a big move in the points. He won this race in 1989, and his other victories have come in the fall race in 1989, uh, 92, 93, and as you mentioned, in 95. And Bobby Hamilton has had enough of uh, Rusty being in front, and now Hamilton goes back to the top spot. But Ned, uh, some of our folks have checked, and you're right, that is the first lap that Rusty Wallace in the Miller car has led this year. completed 104 laps now out of 400. It's Hamilton, Wallace, Gordon, Earnhardt, and Dale Jarrett, the top five. We'll be right back. NASCAR, celebrating 50 years in auto racing from 1948 to 1998. We hope you're enjoying the NASCAR Marathon Part 2 as we bring you 32 hours of continuous NASCAR Winston Cup racing from years gone by. The race that you're watching currently is from March of 1996, the Pontiac Excitement 400 from Richmond. And Benny, we got a Pontiac leading. You know those Pontiac officials would love to give their trophy, the Pontiac Trophy, to a Pontiac driver. but. Still a long ways to go. You know, we started covering races at Richmond back in the early 80s, and you wouldn't even recognize, I mean, back then it was a half-mile racetrack that quite honestly wasn't uh, the best for race fans, and it's just the opposite now. Unbelievable just how much this racetrack has changed, and they did it in just six months. They changed it from the spring race to the fall race, came back to a brand new racetrack. This racetrack used to be a half-mile with metal guardrails that were not very good, but the Sawyers really stepped up to the plate when they changed this thing because it is a first-class facility now. It sure is. Let's go back to March 3rd, 1996 and continue with this Pontiac Excitement 400. We'll see if Bobby Hamilton can go on to win. Well, there isn't a crash on the racetrack, but the roof flaps are up on Jack Roush <laughs> as he tries to stay warm and watching his three cars compete here this afternoon. The official site for NASCAR on the Internet is www.nascar.com, NASCAR Online, featuring plenty of audio and video clips from the races, lots of downloadable photos of the cars and drivers, and live audio of the Daily Motor Racing Network race report. NASCAR Online. Nothing has changed since we have gone to commercial. Bobby Hamilton, the SPP Pontiac, still leading. Rusty Wallace, the Miller Ford, still trying to catch him. And Jeff Gordon still running third. You know, the NASCAR folks have to be happy, you know, because they got a Pontiac, a Ford, and a Chevrolet. Yep. That's what you call parity. Here is Robert Presley, who is running in seventh position at the moment, having come from 23rd starting position. There are the... Uh, Statistics from his last few laps to 16th, 12th, 9th, and has leveled off in 7th position. Having a good 
good run. Sterling Marlin is running good in the Kodak Chevrolet. He's running in eighth place. Bill Weber has more on Robert Presley. Well, Robert, not a lot of luck at this track. 35th last spring, 30th last fall. And they ran yesterday, and then they liked the motor in there, but it was leaking oil. So this morning they changed the motor, and he has come right to the front. Now, Andy Petrie is his new crew chief, and we know what kind of success he's had with Dale Earnhardt. This is a car Andy has basically built since moving over to the 33 team. They qualified so poorly because the sway bar came loose when they were making their qualifying run. They've got a good car and a good start here. Lap 112, they're seventh on the leaderboard. The Leo Jackson owns Skull Chevy for Robert Presley right now running in seventh spot just ahead of Sterling Marlin. It looks like Sterling Marlin has closed up a little bit there. It's a three leaders. Dale Earnhardt has fallen back a little bit from this group of three, and Dale Jarrett is closing up. Yep. So the Dale and Dale show here, fourth and fifth positions. Ned Dale has to be tremendously happy with the way things have gone so far in 1996. Oh, he is, Benny. Things have gelled so well with new team coming together with all new personnel. And, uh, you know, most of the time you say, well, it's going to take them a year or maybe six months or half the season to, to gel. But they just came right out strong from the very beginning. And uh, they just, I guess, happened to get the right, maybe say happened is not the right way to do it because Larry Reynolds and Robert Gates really handpicked the people that they put on that team. And, and uh, it's come out and worked very well another grand field summary I, I just realized this is the first time that we've seen each other since uh dale won the daytona 500 and uh, good job by him needless to say but you do that well thank you <laughs> <laughs> it was it was nice to be able you're to getting to be old hand at that aren't you <laughs> well it's nice uh, as dj goes around earnhardt now and takes over the fourth position while we watch this battle up front uh it's nice to be able to, to sit in the booth and, uh, and call a victory for him occasionally Rusty's closed up right on the back bumper of Hamilton and yep. bringing Jeff Gordon along with him. Yeah, before Hamilton was able to pull away once he got out front. But this time, he hasn't been able to. Rusty's staying right there. We saw the 29 cars on the lead lap with Brett Bodine, the last car on the lead lap. Jeff is a lap down, and so are these cars at least one lap down. Dr. Jerry Punch is standing by with the Honorable Governor of the uh, Commonwealth of Virginia. And for you racing fans or football fans, the name George Allen is going to be very familiar. This is, that was this governor's father, one of the legends in, in pro football. He coaches the and, uh, governor. Your dad was such a legend in coaching. Joe Gibbs involved now in motorsports. I know you've become a huge fan. Well, it's a great competitive sport. It's uh, to have great fans, but it's also a lot of teamwork. And I also want to say howdy to Joe Gibbs. And uh, obviously, it's not just the drivers, the whole team. It's the ownership. And uh, and I think what thing that really makes it is that these uh, drivers and the people involved in it are not haughty. There's a lot of glamour to this and a lot of glitz, but they're just regular people. And, and the best fans, I think, anywhere. Folks will drive from you know hours and hours, stay overnight, and so forth, just to see uh, a race. And it's, it's a tremendous sport. There's over 80,000 people here in Richmond. This is the biggest sporting event in all of the Commonwealth of Virginia, and I think it's a testimony of the great growth and attraction of motor racing. You must be so proud of this facility. It's the largest sports arena in Virginia, you said, but uh, what a show place. Well, it's, it's designed by the Sawyers for the fans, and it, no sport is anything without the fans. They're the ones who who uh, make that investment, the millions of dollars that he put into it worthwhile. Obviously, having ESPN come to Virginia to cover this race is good, good promotion for Virginia. Virginia is a great place for tourism, a great place for business. We say Virginia is for lovers, and it's certainly a great place for race fans, and we're having a very exciting race here today. Governor, thanks for joining us, and thanks for all your support for motor racing. My pleasure. Y'all come visit us in Virginia. <laughs> this is a great place to visit, as Mark Martin has just taken fifth position away from Dale Earnhardt. People are so laid back here, and, and uh, the governor mentioned that uh, this place, and one of, those, one of those signs just outside the main gate here says that this place is fan-friendly, and indeed it is. It's a great place to come and watch a race, and again, the people in, in Ryko County and 
and uh, the city. Not only, off. and not only the, uh, the the racetrack is fan friendly. Uh, the community is fan yeah. friendly. The motels don't jack up the prices. The restaurants don't have a different menu for race week, and other times it's just. You know, they come in, say, come on in, and we'll charge you the same thing we charge Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in the middle of July. So thank you very much for that. Yep. Now back up front, we have Rusty Wallace challenging oh. Bobby Hamilton for the lead again. Rusty got out of shape as he came off that second corner. He's trying it on the outside. That's a hard way to go, Ned. Yes, it is, and especially at this point of the race when there hasn't been that much running up on the outside. Bobby Hamilton hangs on over Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, Dale Jarrett, and Mark Martin in the Pontiac Excitement 400. Maybe when we even come here later in the year, people are going to say, I really need it that much to keep me warm? Yeah, that's pretty cold here today, but it, again, has not deterred the fans from coming out to see their favorite drivers. Well, look at this. It is still a one, two, three situation. Hamilton, Wallace, and Gordon as they put a lap on the 11 car. And Brent Bodine is shown in 29th position, so there are still 28 cars on the lead lap. Clear, Top clear. Petty gets around Kenny Wallace. Moves into 18th, Ned. And his spotter tells him, let's go. But Kenny Wallace, he wants to go too, but not going to work on the outside. Spotter being the cheerleader. Harry Labonte and Sterling Marlin are in 8th and ninth position. Sterling headed up into the second group to see if he can pass it. Meanwhile, John Andretti is right there also. Yeah, he has caught those cars. Terry Labonte just passed Sterling Marlin just the last uh, lap or two, and now he's about to be passed by John Andretti. We'll move Andretti into ninth spot, and Sterling back to ten. There's some cars beginning to slip and slide out there now as they've been on these tires for a little while in green flag conditions. an opportunity to come in and get some new tires on them. Boy, it's been a season of bad luck so far for Terry Labonte, right, Bill? Boy, you're not kidding, Bob. Fortunately, he started on the pole last week, started on the pole here today, maybe going to turn it around. Car not handling all that well, but we're starting to move through the field, but here's the big bad news for Terry Labonte. During his last pit stop, Terry ran over his favorite drinking cup, Batman. This is all that remains, so this team is going to have to go to a backup drinking cup. 508 consecutive starts for number 509. Terry's going to have a new drinking cup here in the Winston Cup Series. Let's go down pit road to John Curry. Well, an anxious moment for Bobby Labonte. Just moments ago, as Bobby radioed in and said he thought he had a tire going down the car, and all of a sudden, gotten extremely loose. They called him to keep it out there. They watched him go by. They told Bobby the tires look like they're okay. They look like they're fine. So to stay out there, we should be seeing pit stops soon because I tell you what, a lot of guys get very loose out there on those worn tires. Bobby Labonte right now is running 25th. And Still on the lead lap. Yeah, there are 26 cars on the lead lap. Jeremy Mayfield is the last car on the lead lap right now. Mike Wallace won the lap down a little bit ago, and so did Jimmy Spencer. Right after we saw Brett Bodine go, go a lap down. Here's an amazing statistic. In all of last year, Bobby led 130 laps, and so far in a little more than two races this year, he has led 136. Presley are together, sixth and seventh, and Earnhardt's slipping back, isn't he? Yes, he's just not able to go in that good red Chevrolet like he was earlier on. It could be that he made a change the last time they made a pit stop, and that change did not work. So the next time that we see the good red Chevrolet in the pits, I'm sure that David Smith and Bobby knows guys, Richard Chillers will come up with something to try to help. Presley takes the spot away the hard way from the top of the racetrack, moving Robert to sixth and dropping Dale back to seventh. 
Robert Presley is running uh, about the same lap times as the leaders right now. He's, he's hanging right in there. In fact, uh, some laps he's running a little bit faster than is Bobby Hamilton. There are the top runners just about to put another lap on Jeff Bodine, who is a lap down in 34th. And right now, this is kind of stabilized. Nobody is uh, changing positions up front. Oh, so, Hamilton took a look on the inside of Bodine. When he got to the corner, Bodine turned left and said, wow. Dale Jarrett has just moved into fourth position. Move back around Mark Martin. They've traded that position a couple of times here during this green flag run. Uh-oh, there we saw John Andretti and Ted Musgrave are side by side. And up front, it's Gordon and Wallace side by side for second. Gordon got a run coming off turn four. Got alongside Rusty Wallace and is trying his best to take over that second spot. But Rusty's going to try his best to find him on back on the outside. It's not going to work. It doesn't appear. Good, clean, close racing there between Gordon and Wallace. Pit stops are going to be coming up pretty soon. We're going to get a quick commercial break in here so that we can come back and follow the pit stop activity in the Pontiac 400 from Richmond. just took over the fourth position from Dale Jarrett. So Robert continues his move towards the front. And we have a new leader. How about that? Jeff Gordon, the DuPont Chevrolet, blew by Bobby Hamilton and has gone in and right now, there we see you, Ned. Just moves down to the inside. I think Hamilton's tires have completely gone away on his Pontiac because Jeff Gordon, once he made this pass, as you see him coming off of turn four, Hamilton's car gets a little bit loose and he just uh, drives away. And he's also lost second place to Rusty Wallace. So it's now Gordon, Wallace, and Bobby Hamilton back to third. Robert Presley running fourth, Dale Jarrett in fifth. And Jimmy Spencer, the Smoke and Joe car, made a pit stop with those fresh tires. We can see just how how fast, much faster he is than the leader of the race, Jeff Gordon. Dale Earnhardt has dropped all the way back to 13th position. So a lot of these guys need to come in for some fresh rubber to get back online. And here's Jerry Punch with more on Dale Earnhardt. Well, the problem with Earnhardt was the previous pit stop, they thought the car needed an adjustment. They actually came in and uh, put around a wedge in the car, made a track bar adjustment, and also changed the air pressure. Apparently, they've made two major a change. They said that the car is just so tight, the car can't turn coming off the corner, so they're going to make a adjustment when he comes back down pit road. Here comes the car number 43 down pit road. Bobby Hamilton's STP Pontiac comes in. He'll be the first of the leaders to make a pit stop under green. And now, because Hamilton has pitted, others will begin to make their entry on the pit road. If you're watching the up, they will change the right side tires. Two right side tires will normally clean the windshield. NASCAR said they will be allowed an extra man over the wall to clean the windshield because of the glare and the dirt. Left side tires going on the Hamilton car. And a little problem now with the left rear. They had a problem with the gun a moment ago. That previous stop cost them about four or five extra seconds. Now he is down and away, 25.5. And he's going to come on the racetrack. He's got to stay below that yellow line. That's very, very slow. But he's going to come on the racetrack right behind the 24 car. And that should put him two laps behind, Benny. On this racetrack, it's awfully tough to come in and out the pits, get four tires without losing two laps. Of course, he's going to be running a lot faster than the others as Ernie Irvin comes down pit road here right now. Ernie Irvin in, so is Mike Wallace as we continue to watch the activity on the racetrack. There goes Steve Grissom on the inside of... Uh, Dale Earnhardt. Ernie Irvin, remember, was caught up in a crash and actually was uh, in a crash early in the race and uh, has had his struggles since then. He is several lap, he is one lap down in 28. Here's Ken Schrader coming up to challenge uh, Dale Earnhardt for 13th position. Earnhardt has slid all the way back. Actually, I think he's back to 14th because Steve Grissom has gone by the three car. Here's John Kernan and Bobby Labonte's pit. It's a four-tire change. Left side's going on. They also made a track bar and a wedge adjustment on the car. The car's just very loose. Bobby gets it and goes down the pit road. They're finished with it. Well, the 33 car is... 
is definitely gaining on Jeff Gordon. The 33, of course, being Robert Presley. And look at Presley's lap times and how they compare to Jeff Gordon's. Wow. Look at that. 23.8 versus 24.3. That's a half second. And there's a, always, a, as always, a tire got the middle of pit road. He didn't like it over there in the fence. He wanted to roll over there. <laughs> and Earnhardt has had enough. He's coming in. Yeah, he slid, he slid as much as he possibly could out there, as much as he could take. He's got to go in and get some new tires on that good wrench Chevrolet. It's a long way down to where he is down at the end of pit road. Here's Jerry Punch. And, Ned, you're absolutely right. They just couldn't wait any longer. We just can't take any more. Then they jump across. They will make an adjustment on the left rear, the left rear window. One round, a half a round. One and a half rounds going out. Extra man cleaning the windshield. And they were, they were concerned about the right front tire. And Jeff Gordon, the leader, also on pit road for his service. Jeff Gordon will get four tires from Ray Everett Hammond Company and a clean windshield. Meanwhile, left side tires going on the Goodrich Chevrolet. He is down and away. And work continues at the far end of pit road. And Earnhardt leaves on the Jeff Gordon car. Let's, let's go to Bill Weber. Robert Presley is in the pit. His 33 made it to the top of the leaderboard. Working lap 161 now. This will be a four-tire change for this Andy Petrie-led crew. Right sides are on. Fuel goes in. Robert sits in the car. Extra man over the wall to clean the windshield. 88 car also headed down pit road. Left side tire is on. Waiting on the left front. Robert Presley is away. Rusty Wallace also made a pit stop. Mark Martin is coming in as Terry Labonte goes out. There is Dale Jarrett in the red carpet leasing Ford. He stayed out and led a lap, so he is uh, one of, uh, I think he and Terry Labonte are the only ones that have led all three races so far this year now. No Dale Earnhardt. Did Dale leave a little bit earlier? If he did, well, that would, yeah. would be uh, the other one. Yeah. Mark Martin. Here's John Kernan as uh, Andretti comes in. John Andretti, no chassis adjustment as of yet. Just very careful to clean the windshield. Just a lot of junk on the window. And as they get into three and four, well, I'll tell you what, a lot of glare. So they get the windshield clean. No chassis adjustment. A four-tire change. Ricky Red is also on his own. Another four-tire change as the crew goes to work around the right side. No chassis adjustment yet. This is a car that won the Phoenix race last fall for Ricky. Richard Broome, the crew chief, of that position this year told me that no matter what he could do to that car, that uh, he could not get it so loose up. And a full tire change for Rudd, he is down and away. Let's go down to Dr. Jerry Punch. And the car that's coming down pit road was the car that settled the pole in Phoenix last year, Bill Elliott, in the McDonald's Ford Thunder. He's the last driver to win from the pole in this race at Richmond, Virginia, back in 1992. A good one for Elliott. He was the leader when he came in the pit. Change right and left side tires. No plan. Chassis just when we are told by Mike Beam. The car is full of fuel. Now waiting on the left front and left rear tire. Talk a little bit with the left front tire. Left rear is already on. They finally get the left front tire on. Down and away. Bill Elliott rolls back out onto the racetrack. He has uh, a victory here in the Pontiac Excitement 400 in 1992. Jeff Gordon goes back to the front of the pack. So pit stops have been completed, and Jeff Gordon comes out as the leader of this Pontiac Excitement 400 from Richmond International Raceway. We'll be right back. There's Jeff Gordon, the leader of the race, coming up on Ernie Irvin, who is in 30th position, just one lap down, but is about to go two laps down. The second place runner at the moment is a little bit back here, back here, back here. There he is, Bobby Hamilton. He's second. It's Joe Nemechek in the Burger King Chevrolet, number 87. And Blake's B, the spam car. There's a battle for third and fourth. Rusty Wallace is third, the two car, and Robert Presley takes it away. You gotta be impressed with Robert Presley, huh? He is looking good today. One of those cars was smoking down in the corner when he got back on the gas. I thought it was Presley. I don't know. There's Terry Labonte, who's running in fifth spot, pole sitter, and eligible for $98,000 in Unical bonus money. Bobby Hillen in the 77 car, the Jasper Engine Automobile. He's 32nd, two laps down. 
the red car in front of Terry Labonte is Jeremy Mayfield, RCA Ford there. He's number 98. And there comes Musgrave, family channel number 16. He's sixth. out the right side of Musgrave's car and watch how fast those fence posters go by. <laughs> man, oh yeah, man. Yeah, that gives you an idea <laughs> just how fast they are going down those straightaways. Be a little tough to spot your uh, wife or your girlfriend in the crowd there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we were watching that. Ricky Craven just passed Jeff Gordon and got back in the lead lap. Ricky had gone a lap down, but he's back in the lead lap now. He's being shown in the 21st position. Dale Jarrett has caught the 16 car of Ted Musgrave. 88 is Dale Jarrett, the Ford Quality Care car. That's a battle for, what's that, six? Uh -huh. And we heavy, heavy traffic down in that corner. Well, there are a lot of cars there. Be careful, boys. All of you. And Darrell Walter just passed Jeff Gordon and got back in the lead lap. Yep. Darrell was running 20 seconds, so I don't know if Gordon's having problems or these guys uh, picked up some speed. I don't think he's uh, losing any, any time to Bobby Hamilton. It's just that uh, it could be that Darrell Walter and Ricky Craven stopped later than did Jeff Gordon and changed their tires is one reason they were lap, but now they have pressure tires, so they're able to run faster than Jeff Gordon. I think that's the case, Benny. Good point. Daryl Waltrip, the leading active driver in number of wins. Doc? There isn't a problem with Jeff Gordon, but every time, almost every lap, Ray Evernham, I tell you, I wish you could hear this. Ray Evernham is talking to his young driver, saying, take it easy, you're doing well, you're doing well. About 20 laps ago, Gordon told him, he said, now, don't worry if they go by you, they'll back up and you'll go right back by them, which is exactly what happened. So every time by, he's coaching his young driver, somewhat of a pep talk, but also some coaching, saying, take it easy, don't use it up, don't waste the tires, be very, very smooth. So there's no problem with Gordon a minute ago, you saw Walter go by. As a matter of fact, I was handed a note, uh, the 4 and 17, the 41 and 17, in fact, stopped a lap before Jeff Gordon. Really? So right. those cars are running very well right now. Yes, they are. That's pretty impressive. Yep. Three and a half second difference between Gordon in first and Robert Presley in third. And Presley is gaining on Bobby Hamilton, who is running in second place. There's the leader, Jeff Gordon, with Walter right ahead of him. That's Morgan Shepard, who just came in for a pit stop, so he's got some fresh rubber on. Derek Cope. Here comes Hamilton. Speed, Bobby Labonte, and Robert Presley. And there's your 3.3 second interval between first and third. Bobby Labonte is running one lap down in 24th position. And Presley just drives down to the inside. Goes by Labonte. His car is hooked up. He just might be the best out there right now. Now he's worked himself out of uh, some traffic and has clean sailing ahead for a moment until he comes up on Lake Speed. But he started 23rd in this race, and Robert Presley, despite the donut, watch a just keeps getting closer and closer to Bobby Hamilton. He was three and a half seconds just a moment ago, 3.5, and now 3.1. Oh, that's between he and Jeff Gordon, I'm told, not, in fact, uh, he and Bobby Hamilton. That's, that's see, the two highlighted numbers, BP, that's how you can tell that. Oh, excuse me. That's okay, you'll learn. You'll stay with us a few more <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and Gordon is still being passed by cars. There's yeah. Derek Cope going by. Derek normally runs good here, but uh, Gordon, I don't think he's, his car is quite as good as it might have been a little bit earlier. I think you're right. I think that both Hamilton and Presley are gaining on Jeff Gordon. 2.5 seconds now between first and third. By the way, Derry Cope, as you saw on lap himself, he's 23rd, so now there are 24 cars on the lead lap. And there is the 24th car of the Lake Speed there in the number nine span board. I mean, Ricky Craven in the 41 car that passed Jeff Gordon just a few laps ago, he has pulled the link to the back stretch in front of the leader, Jeff Gordon. So, yeah, he just simply grew, has driven away from him. 
So Robert Presley comes up now on Bobby Hamilton. As Presley is running third, looking for second, and also looking for the lead that's being held by the 24 car of Jeff Gordon. Back with more right after this. It's that time of year. Not year. Pontiac Excitement 400 at Richmond International Raceway, and here's how it happens. That's the 12 car, Derek Cope and Ernie Irving, the 28. They get 24 off the gas a little bit, and Bobby Hamilton goes by the STP Pontiac once again in front. So Bobby Hamilton goes back to the lead from his third starting position. Gordon is back to second with Robert Presley now third, followed by Rusty Wallace and Terry Labonte with 202 laps to go, 198 complete. Next time by 199, and then, well, that was 199. Next time will be the halfway signal, and Bobby Hamilton will pick up the Gatorade halfway money of 10,000, isn't it, Ned? Yep, 10,000 bucks. Wow. That's a good piece of change. How about that? Huh? Now, and we see Robert Presley closing in on Jeff Gordon. And here it is, cross flags. Bobby Hamilton leads at halfway, picks up the money. And Jerry is with Ray Everham. Well, you had a comfortable lead. Now you've lost the lead. Is there a problem with the car? No, that 43 car is just awful strong. Uh, our car is better on long runs. Uh, we got tangled up in some lap traffic, but I think we're going to be all right. You know, the 43 car is awful strong, so we just have to keep working on our car. You keep telling your young driver to be smooth and just take your time and get a rhythm up. He seems to be listening. Yeah, he's doing a real good job. It's just like he used to drive those dirt sprint cars and they burned the tires off. And this is kind of along the same thing. He's got to leave the tires on that thing and he wants to win the 100-mile the dirt race. Well, that's Ray Everham telling his young driver you can't burn those dirt tires off. You've got to be patient. That's what he's told him to do. Hey, Doc, go tell Ray this is not a 100-mile dirt race. This is a 400 left <laughs> race here on a three-quarter-mile paved racetrack. But I understand exactly what he's saying. they got to keep the tires on the car. And now Jeff Gordon is coming back. Maybe Hamilton used his tires up just a little bit too much, chasing down Jeff Gordon. And watch as Jeff Gordon closes up right on the back bumper of Hamilton. Or maybe Bobby went up there to get that 10 grand. That could be, yeah. And... Okay, now I don't want to run fast anymore. Huh? <laughs> you can have it back. Looking back on Jeff from Bobby's car. And we see Rusty Wallace back in the picture there. He's back in fourth spot, and uh, there's just one car between he and Robert Presley. And there's a car back behind them that's really coming on, and that is Jeff Burton in car number 99. He has moved out of nowhere up into seventh place. He's passed Ted Musgrave, Mark Martin, and uh, several cars back there. He is on the move coming up on Dale Jarrett here right now. So Jeff Burton is one of the fastest on the racetrack right now. Started 21st, was 14th on lap 140 up as high as six then dropped back and now moves up again to seventh on the 203rd circuit jeff burton driving one of the third the third roush team car this year and rusty wallace has gone past robert Preston to take over third spot there's the first four cars in the picture of the lake speed in the between them hamilton and gordon first and second Jeff Bodine moves over and gives him plenty of room. He's three laps down, make that four laps down now in 35th position after being involved in a crash up in turn two. Look at Gordon come up on Bobby again. As a matter of fact, Jeff Bodine, folks, you saw the parachute he has on his car. <laughs> the left rear quarter panel or fender is flared out, and I know that's got to be slowing the car down, down the straightaway, catching all that air. And Gordon looks down on the inside of Hamilton. Yep, once that lead back, we remind you again of a statistic, and look at Jeff Burton blow past Dale Jarrett to take over sixth. We remind you, as was pointed out earlier in the show, Jeff Gordon had his worst finish of 1995, 36th here last year. He's battling Bobby Hamilton for the lead here this afternoon, but in his rearview mirror, not too far behind 
is the two car of Rusty Wallace. 1.3 seconds, as a matter of fact, and here we have a battle for the lead on the front stretch. It's Gordon on the inside, Hamilton on the inside, and Gordon has it. And there's only 1.3 second difference between second and third. He's going to look and say, now, where did he pick up that speed that he didn't have when I passed him there a while ago? He probably rode along behind Bob Hamilton and saw the line that he was running and said, hey, maybe that is a little bit better. So cooled his tires a little bit and came up there and went right back by. Less than a second interval now between Hamilton and Rusty Wallace, down to eight-tenths of a second. There's Rusty right behind Lake Speed. This is going to turn into a four-car battle before long, Benny. That's right, because Robert Presley is right behind the, the two-car of Rusty Wallace. And guess what? Guess who else has joined this bunch? There's Terry Labonte, yeah. Texas Terry in the Kellogg's car. He'll sneak up on you. He, he has kind of snuck up on them. And Bill Weber, where did he come from? He came from the back, Benny. They will be very good on longer runs. They want long runs. Lots of green flags. The car will not handle when they put on fresh tires. They battled it. In fact, they were so bad yesterday in final practice, they went back to their notes from their test following the Daytona 500. They came up here and tested, made lots of notes. They handled so bad yesterday afternoon. Through Chief Gary Dehart reverted to those notes. They're still not very good early, but the longer they run, the better he gets. So the first five cars are now right together on the racetrack. Gordon. Hamilton, Wallace, Presley, and Terry Labonte with 213 out of 400 laps completed. It's the Pontiac Excitement 400, third race of the 96 NASCAR Winston Cup season from Richmond International Raceway in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And Jeff Gordon is the man who is leading this event with 217 laps completed. And the man who is dropping to the back is Bobby Hamilton. Look at Terry Labonte here. Put a move on Robert Presley. He takes over fourth. And while he's doing that, Rusty Wallace takes over second. And then look at Terry Labonte coming on the inside of Robert Presley. Takes that position away. And then he'll come right up and drive right on by Bobby Hamilton. Takes over the third position. So all of that, all of that in a span of three quarters of a mile. And that's how quickly the positions can change. And the man on the move is Jeff Burton, who has moved up to fourth position. And there comes Dale Jarrett. He's going by Robert Preston. So now Robert is back in sixth spot. There we see two, three, four, five, six all together. And look how Burton has closed in on the leader, Jeff Gordon, in the last few laps. We timed laps 213 to 217. It was a 2.6 second interval at 213 down to 2.1 on lap 217. So Burton is definitely one of the faster cars on the racetrack. Right, John Kernan? got that right as he takes a look at Terry Labonte and the inside as they head down into one he's trying to take over the third spot. Buddy Parrott is crew chief has that car set up for a long green flag run. The longer it runs the better it runs. They will pit for four tires in about 19 laps but right now according to Buddy Parrott's stopwatch his young driver it was a tenth of a second quicker than the leader and now Jeff could set his sights on Rusty Wallace trying to take over that second spot. And Benny Parsons likes to describe this as a mess. Boys, <laughs> be careful. Please, just be careful. This is a mess. It is a lot of it. Dale Jarrett got by both the Rusty Wallace and Terry Labonte car there as Jeff Burton just continues the charge towards the front. He has caught Jeff Gordon, the two Jeff. Now it's the Jeff and Jeff yeah, show. No longer the Dale and Dale show. Here's the Bush right, race recap. Uh, Jeff Gordon. Leading 72 with the first 221 laps, 15 lead changes, three cautions for 15 laps, average speed 105.8. Here are the lap leaders and those who have picked up five bonus points, and we're going to add another name to that list because Jeff Burton will lead lap 224. Unbelievable. Here are some other drivers that have led at least one lap.
and the only car out of the race at this point is Wally Dallenbach, who was involved in an incident with Ernie Irvin early in the race, and his car was damaged beyond repair. Look at Burton go, and now it is Dale Jarrett moving up to second. Well, I tell you, nobody Terry's very happy to see that 99 car of Jeff Burton out front. There's another guy, too. We don't hear a lot about We talk about car builders all the time. Chip Lane built this car, and uh, he has got to be happy with the way he sees this car running right now. In the 99, you mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's Mike Wallace in the 90 car. Halleck Mars automobile being left. With Mike now two laps down. Oh. And Rhea Press. Oh, Rhea Press, guys. Robert Presley backed out. Good, smart move there, Robert. Sure is. And look at Ted Musgrave. He is between Robert Presley and Rusty Wallace now. Musgrave is in sixth position in the Family Channel Ford. Trying to get to the inside of Robert Presley. Can't do it. So right now, Jack Roush has three cars. Hamilton. Hamilton is coming in for a pit stop. Yeah, he's, he's slid as much as he wants to slide right now on that set of tires come in and get him some more, right, Jerry Punch? You're exactly right, Danny. He's been on the last 153, and the tires have just totally gone away. He's out there skating, and to leave him out any longer would be possibly hazardous. He could tear up the race car. The car has gotten so very, very loose. He's going to change four tires and also put around the bike in the rear. So you see him taking, uh, making a wedge adjustment on the right rear. He'll come around to the left side of the MCP Pontiac. He'll put left side tires on. So a minor wedge adjustment and an air pressure adjustment trying to tighten up Bobby Hamilton putting him back up front where he was earlier. He is down and away. 23.4 seconds for Bobby Hamilton as he comes back out onto the racetrack. There we see the 88 car going past the leader of the race. Jeff Burton now puts him down again. Two laps. Yep. And here comes Sterling Marlin in for a pit stop on the Kodak Film Chevrolet. He relinquishes his 16th position to come in. He's got Lake Speed right behind him as the Kodak Film Chevy gets stopped. And a little bit of wedge adjustment there on the back of the car. Gas man waits till the left rear tire changer comes around, and then he goes and plugs the gas can in to complete filling up the car with the Union 76 gasoline. The teams are helping us out with their overhead cameras. This is the second year that they have cooperated with us and provided those overhead shots. It's a really a good way to see how good the crews can change those tires and get the fuel in as Marlin goes back out on the racetrack again, keeping the car under the uh, yellow line until he gets to the back stretch, and then he can pull out into traffic. Here is Terry Labonte racing with his teammate Jeff Gordon. That's how they started this race. That's the way they were when the green flag dropped, and here they're racing third and fourth. See Darrell Walter, the 17 car, the Western Auto Car, going down pit road. Here comes Musgrave trying to take a spot away from Jeff Gordon as we see Kenny Schrader, the Bud car, in the pits. 4.2 second difference between first and fourth. He's falling back. Jeff Gordon is back to 4.2 seconds. Musgrave drives up on the outside, and Mike Wallace is just chomping at the bits because he has fresh tires on. A little bit of contact there, maybe, huh? And we see Johnny Benson, obviously, with fresh tires. He goes by as Mike Wallace also. Now it's a five-second interval between first and fourth as Dale Earnhardt comes in for a pit stop. He was running in 12th position. down through pit road and finally arrives for the richard childress crew to go to work on the car here's doc right side tires going on the good red chevrolet they already finished the right side that will come around to the left side of the car remember earnhardt had a major problem with the car being too tight for they made an adjustment and now make another adjustment to the right rear of the car they put the left side tires on the seven time with the cup champion also further down pit road jeff gordon's in the pit his car going away they have, they have already changed the right side tires now left side tires going on they clean the windshield and ray everton has cleaned the windshield and the 33 is also down and out that is robert Preston. he comes down to it and here comes rusty wallace and he races and jeff gordon back to turn 
one of the 88 car, Dale Garrett, comes down pit road. Terry Labonte is on pit road, getting service on the Kellogg's Corn Flakes car. Here comes Musgrave and Martin. There goes Terry out of the pits. Crew changing the right side tires on uh, Dale Jarrett's car. The 99 car relinquishes the lead. Jeff Burton gives it up. Okay, I'm here. And Mark Martin is also in. Work is going on the right side of that car. John Andretti is also getting his stop. Jeff Burton, meanwhile, let's see how they're progressing. They're on the left side of the car. Oh, Bobby Labonte has a problem. Couldn't get into his pits. It's going to be hard, hard for us to get out of that pit the way he's parked. Now, Mark Martin is leaving his pit. John Landretti is rolling, so is Jeff Burton. Pit stops happening quickly here. Uh, the leader is Bill Elliott. He has not made a pit stop yet. There he is. Now, Bill was one of the last ones to stop before when they stopped on Green Flag. He and Ricky Rudd. Ricky Rudd is coming into the pits right now in his tight port as Bobby Labonte does get out of his pits and goes back down pit road. There's Michael Walter moving around uh, Bill Elliott. Michael is uh, four laps down in 31st place. I guess that'll put him three laps down now. Elliott stays out there, but look at the traffic jam. Man, here's Bobby Hamilton leading Rusty Wallace. There's Jeff Gordon, Robert Presley. All these fellows have made pit stops and have these fresh tires. They're all in some heavy traffic now. There's Rick Mastin. Man, let me out of the way. <laughs> Jeremy Mayfield is in this mess. So is Brett Bodine. There's Ward Burton. I mean, Jeff Burton. Presley is up alongside uh, Gordon again. So pit stops, for the most part, have been completed, although Bill Elliott has not made a stop, and he is at the front of the Pontiac Excitement 400. We'll be right back. Tom Bottleton, who's running second, on third place, Rusty Wallace. Now, right now, Bill Elliott will be coming in the pits fairly soon, but I tell you what, this is one heck of a great stock car race between. These cars are so evenly matched, and finally, Elliott goes to pit road and in the McDonald's Ford. So that means that everybody has now made his pit stop, and Bobby Hamilton goes back to the lead. Doctor, he's headed towards you. And guys, the reason they left Bill Elliott out to the pit on lap 250 is by their calculation, they tell me he will not have to stop again unless we get a caution flag. They're going to roll the dice and gamble. This will be the last stop he will make under the green. They feel their fuel value is good enough they can make it, 160 laps. That's going to be awfully close, but hey, this guy has Mike Beam as a crew chief, and Beam has been awfully good at calculating fuel over the years. Left side cars are on, and he is down at a weight 20.9 seconds. Jerry, he's going to have to stop again. He has only gone 86 laps since the last time he pitted. He cannot run 150 laps on the tires. We've seen it today that the tires just wear too much to run 150 laps. All right, Bobby Hamilton still is your leader now. Rusty Wallace second. Robert Presley, Terry Labonte, and Jeff Gordon make up the top five. So you say Jeff Gordon. Let me tell you, that's being contested as we speak. I think maybe it's going to be Dale Jarrett. See? Yep, you're right. Now let's show you a Fram field summary showing that Jeff is in fifth, but as we say, he and Jarrett are contesting the position at the moment. And Musgrave right behind him and watches and waits and hopes he can get on the inside of Jeff. Now, we talk, as we see Musgrave try to make that move on him, Jeff, we talked about Jeff Burton, how fast he was before they made those pit stops. Apparently, his car really works on the long run because he came out of the pits in front of Dale Jarrett. Well, Jarrett has passed him and driven on away right now, although he's beginning to pick up the speed now as he gets on the inside of Jeff Gordon. But it just seems to take Jeff Burton's car a little while to come in on those new tires. It looks like the Jeff Gordon might be the guy that's, that car is not quite right after this last round of pit stops because he has lost three or four spots in the last few laps. John Kernan? 
after that last round of pit stops, I went up to ask Buddy Parrott just how good a shape they were in about the long runs and stuff. Well, Buddy just looked at me, held up his thumbs, and hey, we are okay. They are set up for the long runs, as you said, so watch them. Once they get in, after about 15 to 20 laps, that's when it seems that car wants to really take off. Buddy John, Perry. I'll be watching, trust me, because I ain't going no place. This is a great car race. It really is. We've got 22 cars that are still on the lead lap. Now what a car on the wall is Jimmy. Well, I don't think he hit the wall, Bob. He slowed dramatically coming off of turn two over there and just drove up high to let other cars go under him. I don't think he got into the wall, but something, uh, I don't know what happened to Jimmy Spencer's car, but all at once it just slowed down because he was really moving there even though he's uh, four laps down. Yeah, it hasn't been as good a week as it was last week for Jimmy Spencer. Here it is again, Ned, and you see car go up the hill. How close did he come? No, he, he stayed off of it. Just one of those situations. And there's a race for the battle for the lead, and Rusty Wallace has taken the lead back from Bobby Hamilton. That's Wallace in the black number two, Hamilton in the STP number 43. This is how the lead change occurred as Rusty went back to the front. Well, he just pulled her down on the inside. Hamilton went high, gave him plenty of room, and Rusty drove on by. And you see that green car right at the top of the edge of the screen? That is Robert Preston, the third-place car. 14th, 15th, and 16th are in a good battle here. Ken Schrader, Kyle Petty, Sterling Marlin, Jeremy Mayfield, all in here. Mayfield is not on the same lap, however, as the others. Mayfield is two laps down in 28th position. I tell you, it's amazing there are still 21 cars as we watch that battle there between Kyle Petty and, and uh, Ken Schrader. 21 cars still on the lead lap after we have had the mini green flag pit stop. Clear. Yep. Kyle Petty's spotter telling him that it was clear. Is that tie spot for him? I don't know. By the way, as we look at this, i got to say hello to Felix Sabatis III. He outside. He's telling that Sterling Marlin's on the outside. He had a son Friday. Chani and Tracy had a son, so it's Fel Let's see. Felix the Fourth. <laughs> well, congratulations. Go, 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 he just, just grazed the wall, but Marlin saved it, and you heard the spotter say, he's out of there. <laughs> Man. Boy, he did a great job. He did. Benny, we also want to say hello to John Darby. He's a NASCAR official, works in the Bush Series, and handles the engine inspection for the Bush Series. John had surgery on Friday in Rockford, Illinois, and I certainly hope that everything goes well with John. John, get better quick and get on back here. So a miraculous save by Sterling Marlin up in the first corner. I tell you what I thought he was in the wall. Watch so this. High. He goes in the corner a little bit too high, gets up in that loose stuff. And... Ain't no way. There ain't, <laughs> ain't no way he saved that car, but he did. Here's another angle. And Benny, as you've pointed out many times, once you get up there in the marbles where that loose rubber is, there is no traction. It's just like ice, but he dirt tracked it right around. In there. Great job by Sterling Marlin. <laughs> That uh, dropped him back to 17th. He really didn't lose a whole lot of positions because of that. So uh, Sterling is still on the gas. We'd also like to express our condolences to Linda Holdeman and the Holdeman family. Roger, the uh, owner and operator of Winchester, Indiana Speedway, one of the feature uh, tracks on uh, ESPN's Thursday Thunder, passed away this past week. And uh, Linda has asked that in lieu of flowers, donations be made in her husband's name. And those donations will be directed toward charities, which Linda and Roger were so active in. So our condolences and, again, uh, in lieu of flowers, donations should be made to Linda Holdeman at Winchester, Indiana. Indiana Speedway. You know, we probably should be saying hello to Loy Allen, who was banged up last week at Rockingham and did not come up here in the 19 car. Dick Triple drove the car. They did not make the field, so but Loy Allen get... Uh, yeah, he was released Friday, Benny. Loy was, so we're sure you're watching Loy, and we wish you our best and uh, hope to see you back at the racetrack very, very soon. Now here is Dale Jarrett and Robert Presley going at it. Jarrett takes over that third spot. His car's on the move right now. He's uh, running very good. 
Blake Speed has gotten a lot of coverage today, hadn't he, in that spam car? Not because he's been up front, but he always seems to be where our cameras are. Well, he's, he's been in the middle of this battle all for the last 100 laps. He's in 21st, a lap down. Yeah, just went a lap down not many laps ago, so he's been teetering on being a lap down, so he's been right up there with the front yep. runners. There is second and third, Hamilton and Jarrett, with the lead being held by Rusty Wallace looking for his sixth victory on the three-quarter mile at Richmond International. Pontiac Excitement 400, 253 laps under green and only 15 under the yellow so far. So we'll take a break and be back with more of our live coverage here on ESPN of the Pontiac Excitement 400. Wallace leading at Richmond. On the provisional move. Sure is. He has caught Rusty Wallace. Meanwhile, Rusty Wallace trying to put old DW lap down. Darrell don't no part of that action. Staying out for the Miller Ford. He's 21st, BP, and... Uh, the last car on the lead lap, and that's exactly where he wants to stay, on the lead lap. Here's a Napa field summary as we watch Burton go by Hamilton for third. You know, Burton's car began to pick up now after he made that pit stop. Took him a little while to get those tires worked in the way he wanted to, but he's on the move now. 75 car of Morgan Shepard just came out of the pits. He's on fresh tires. Not been a particularly impressive day for Morgan. He's 37th and eight laps down in the running for the machine. Musgrave goes by Hamilton, takes over that sports spot. So Ted Musgrave, the Family Channel car, very, very good run today. And here comes Mark Martin, the third member of the Jack Roush team. Right now, Jack Roush has three cars in the top six. Not seven. bad, a seven, yeah. 99 is third, the 16 is fourth, and the six is seventh. Here is Jarrett now right up on that back bumper of Rusty Wallace. And while they're racing there with that traffic, Jeff Burton is just mowing them down. Ooh, three wide here, and it's uh, Mark Martin to the inside of Terry Labonte for sixth. Bobby Hamilton is probably going to stop short uh, like he has been and change and tired. Oh, battle for the lead, turn one. Here is Jarrett going to the inside in the first corner, and can he take over the lead from Rusty Wallace? Yes. Now then, we see that Jeff Burton in the exit car is coming on in there. There's Terry Labonte going by Bobby Hamilton. Once again, the STP car on long runs. Getting slower. That's for fifth spot. So they will probably have to stop twice again with 120 laps to go. The STP Pontiac is going to have to stop twice. Some other cars might try to make it on one stop. You know that it'll be interesting to see if they can go on one one stop, Benny. But there's a couple of those drivers that we've been talking about good on long runs like Jeff Burton and Dale Jarrett. Their car seems to be better after they run a while. They wouldn't mind seeing this thing stay green, I believe. Okay, Burton is right behind Rusty Wallace. And there's Morgan Shepard, as you said, with the fresher tires. Now, finally, Rusty pulls up mm. on the back, and Jeff Burton just turns left and tries to get alongside Rusty. Well, Darrell's giving them room up there on the outside to race, but with those hotter tires, it's hard to race up there on that outside. As we watch this, Robert Presley in the 33 Skull car is having all kinds of trouble now. His car has gone away. He's back to ninth spot. You see that on your scoring pylon. The position is changing. Now we see the difference between Jeff Burton in third place and Dale Jarrett, the leader, 1.3 seconds. And here comes Burton on the inside of Rusty Wallace. And Burton is about to go into second position. Jeff Burton led 15 laps earlier in all of last year. He only led two races for a total of four laps. And he is in second right now, a second and a half behind. Jared. 
And here comes Musgrave. Good run for Ted Musgrave. Yes, it is. Ted Musgrave, a former pole setter here at the Richmond International Raceway. So he gets around this racetrack good. Dale Jarrett is running some heavy traffic up there. Cars running side by side, but he's going to make it three deep going into turn one. Who's going to come out of that? I'm looking for something you're not seeing on the screen. Folks. Sorry about that, but, uh, you know, got a little personal interest there. Here's a battle for the third spot. Ted Musgrave is on the move. He started 15th. He's been as low as 17th, as high as third, and he has now moved into third position because he just passed Rusty Wallace. He hasn't led a lap, but he's darn close. And it's only a second interval now between first and second. Jarrett and Burton. The problem Burton has right now, he has traffic in front of him. There we see Oh, man, there's a mess. The 33 car, the 43 car, and 22, Ward Burton. MBNA car joining that battle. All battling for position, 33, 43, and 22. And yeah, that's 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th. Five boards up front. This is the first time that Dale Jarrett has ever led at Richmond International Raceway, but he is out front right now with 288 of 400 laps completed in the Pontiac Excitement 400. Stay with us. Very picture is air ducts. They pick up air as the car goes down the straightaway. The hose carries that cool air back to the brakes on the rotor and trying to keep those brakes as cool as possible. We see two hoses. There's also room for a third. And even at that, that's how red the brake rack in Winston Cup racing. And that's hot. Bobby Hamilton is in the pits once again. Doc? And Bob, and Bob I don't think they're going to be able to make it on one this final stop. They've had to come in at least once more. They're just getting some terrible tire wear up front as they are down in the way. They've changed all four tires and he is down and gone. Meanwhile, other pit crews are thinking about trying to make it on one more stop, including Ted Musgrave. They want to pit on around lap 320. That would mean they, they would have run 80 laps on tire and have 80 to go. And we have a good battle shaping up up front as Jeff Burton has caught Dale Jarrett. The Roush cars are now second, third, and fourth. Now hold on. Maybe we'll make that first, third, and fourth as indeed Burton has taken the lead from Dale Jarrett. Here's John Turner. And Bob, Buddy Pear and the crew want to do the same thing. They want to stretch this for 22 more laps, then come in, get a set of tires on, and go to the end. Because if you just witnessed, that car runs great on these long flag runs, long green flag runs. In fact, they've got just a little over 62 laps on that set of tires right now. So Jeff Burton is back out front, and while in some Winston Cup races you can tell who's going to win a race at this point, there is about eight or ten guys who have a very good chance of winning this race with 100 laps to go. Bill Weber? Well, these guys down here in the 88 pit seem to feel Dale Pierre could be one of those guys. They're also a team that's getting excellent tire wear, as Ned pointed out, good on the long runs. This team will make one more stop. Right now, the Ford car making its stop, but the 88 bunch, Dale Jarrett, one more stop, trying to race to the checkers. Sterling Marlin still in, getting tires on the left side of that car. He's away now as we watch the second place car of Dale Jarrett. There's Sterling moving back out onto the racetrack. Kenny Wallace was in for a pit stop. He's 17th, a lap down. There is second place Jarrett. And there is Kyle Pitt, oh, yeah. who just completed his work. Rusty Wallace is in. He fell back to seventh, but now is in for a pit stop. Dale Earnhardt also coming down pit road. Earnhardt is still back in 13th position. He's been in 13th position for a while. This coming with just a little less than 100 laps to go. Right side tires being changed on the Miller car. Here's Jerry Punch. 
both the three and the two car pinnacle about one pin apart. They've already put right side tires on Rusty Wallace's car now. Left side tires going on. A major chassis adjustment for the Goodrich Chevrolet. Their car was really tight in the middle of the corner and loose coming off as Rusty has already exited the pit. And now the left side tires are on the Earnhardt car. He is down and away. Once again, you cars have to stay below that yellow line as they exit the pit. Now, as they go down the back stretch, they're able to accelerate and blend with traffic. Rusty Wallace has a problem. Now, maybe he's getting to go in, but he was really went high and turns three and four up there as if the car maybe had quit, but now he's picked back up. But he definitely, I guess when he went in those cold tires, went into turn three, it just uh, went a little high with him. But he's okay now. He comes back out ahead of the 16 car, Ted Musgrave, which is running in third position at the moment and ahead of Harold Waltrip. He has 13 top fives in 24 starts here at Richmond. Rusty Wallace does. Well, that is amazing. Quite a short track driver. This is yes. one of his favorite short tracks. active driver at uh, Richmond is right behind him, Darrell Waltrip, whose last victory came in 1985 here at Richmond. Now, Rusty went two laps down when he when he made that pit stop, but he's not far behind the leader, Jeff Burton, in about five or six laps. He'll be back up there and be back in the same lap. Let's go to the pits with more on Rusty Wallace and Jerry Punch. You talked about Rusty's success here, five wins at this racetrack, a win here in this spring event. But, you know, I asked Rusty this morning, why what, Why is this track so special? What's so different? He said, he said, Doc, the fact that I have so much confidence in myself when I come here. And that's the main key. A driver has personal confidence. And I feel like when I come here, no matter how bad my car is in practice or qualifying, I feel like when the green flag drops, I can win the race. And that's just a tremendous amount of confidence in a driver. And Benny and Ed, that makes a big difference, a driver believing in himself that he can win at both the 6 and 16 head down pit road. Robert Presley uh, just completed his work and now as you indicated two of the Roush cars are in while the other one continues to lead Musgrave and Martin are on pit road. And the reason that it takes two laps for these cars to pit as you see them coming down the long pit road about a 50 mile per hour speed limit. They cannot exceed that speed, and that's why it takes so long to come down through there. Meanwhile, the cars are on the racetrack running 125 miles per hour. Now, yeah, this is a long pit road here at Richmond. Every, everyone pits on the front stretch. And it uh, just takes a while to get there. As you see Mark Martin getting that service. Meantime, Rusty Wallace has passed Jeff Burton, so now he's only one lap down and, and the distance around the racetrack. Here's the leader, Jeff Burton, whose brand new Jack Roush team has finished fifth at Daytona and 13th at Rockingham. Here he comes. Leading here today, and now he drops down off the 14 degrees of banking, heading for pit road. This has to be earlier than he wanted to, isn't it, John Kernan? Well, they wanted to stretch it up to lap 320, but after they saw some of the other cars who had been taking on tires, looked at their stopwatches, Buddy Parrott made the executive choice. They're coming in for four tires. No chassis adjustment as of yet. Right side work is done. Around to the left side. They'll jack it up. One, two, pump. Now the car full of fuel. Fuel is not the problem. It's tire wear. Jeff Burton is sitting here waiting. Jack goes down. 2.1 seconds, but that would be laps to the end. You see Terry Labonte, the Kellogg's car, stopped. Again, they're going to have to run 87 laps, and I think the only car that can do that is Bill Elliott. Here comes Dale Jarrett down pit road, so he's got to go 87 laps to the end. Jeff Gordon is also in. Here's Bill Weber. Dale Jarrett eases on the pit road. There's a piece of paper on the front of the grill. They get that right away, go around to the right side. They'll make sure to get every ounce of fuel in this car. Clean the windshield. Right side tire around to the left side now slide the jack in up goes the car off come the left side tires they yank out the left rear and the left one hold on two new ones waiting now for the car to drop it's down and dj's away to dr jerry thus far no jesse just whatsoever on the dupont chevrolet and jeff gordon they've only changed right and left side tires and ray everton said we're going to be patient our car will be there at the end 
that is going to give the lead back to Bill Elliott, who once again is one of the last to pit. Here is uh, Ricky Rudd in for a stop in the tied Ford. We're working to get the tires on, make sure there's no debris in the grill, and he moves away. So once again, Bill Elliott now is the only car that is on the lead lap. Everybody else is a lap down. But Elliott will need a pit stop before too long. And 316 laps have been completed here at Richmond. And the Pontiac Excitement 400 will be back right after these messages. NASCAR, celebrating 50 years in auto racing, from 1948 to 1998. Welcome back to Daytona USA as the NASCAR ESPN2 Marathon continues. Bob and Benny here. We're watching the Pontiac Excitement 400 from March of 1996. Well, Bobby Hamilton is a little off the pace. Maybe not a win for him. But another guy that's looking real good is Jeff Burton. And I'll never forget the interview that you had with him, I think after his first Bush race at Martinsville. I'll never forget Kim. You know, that was the, the thrill of victory if I've ever seen it in my life. Jeff Burton at Martinsville was pitting on the backstretch in the Bush race that we're talking about. And when he won, he pulled around to the start-finish line. Kim, his girlfriend at the time, now they're married and have a child. <laughs> but she bolted yes. from the backstretch to the front stretch, and she looked like a deer going across that infield to get to Jeff Burton to congratulate him on his victory. And when I see Jeff, that's the thing I think about. Indeed. It's a cold day in Richmond, March 3rd, 1996, but the race continues, and so do we as the NASCAR Marathon rolls on. Back at Richmond International Raceway, something's wrong with Dale Earnhardt. Yeah, he's definitely has slowed down the last couple of laps, Bob. Saw some smoke there a little bit ago. I don't see smoke right now, but something is going on in the pits there with the official that was Richard Childers talking to his crew. Let's go to the pits and Jerry Punch. Well, the official was just telling Richard Childers, your car has smoke coming out of the right front. And Richard said, we think it's a problem with the brakes, possibly the brake caliper on the right front. So they're trying to decide what they're going to do, but obviously not a very good sign for Dale Earnhardt. He's dropped back to, uh, what, 14th position right now. Meanwhile, Bill Elliott's still out there surfing the racetrack. He hasn't made a pit stop. He's got a lap on the field right now. He's just hoping for a caution. on the lap by himself. Everybody else through 14, a lap down. Now he comes into the pits right now, Bob, Don't so that'll that. change, <laughs> yep. Bill stayed out there. Now he can go the rest of the way. He only has 76 laps to go. Jerry Punch, he's heading down towards you. And then he's been on lap 250. That's 75 laps to go, and he has exactly 75 laps to make it to the, the checkered flag. So Bill Elliott possibly trying to get a win here in Richmond, Virginia, his second career win ever. He won it here in 92 from the pole. Right side power, going on to McDonald's, Ford Thunderbird. Mike Beam and crew get it full of gas. A lot of gas being spilled out here on the left side of the car. Apparently it was full. Now left side jacking over the car. Lug nuts off, wheels and tires are off. Fresh Goodyear tires going on. And they pull the jack, knee is down, and smokes the tires 22.5 seconds. And I tell you what, we just had about had ourselves a little crash over in the second corner. We did. Uh, yeah, watch this. Another mess, right? Yeah, another mess. Watch, that's Dave Marcus in the 71. He and Rusty Wallace make some contact. He goes up the hill, and Musgrave goes by Rusty Wallace to take over second spot. So right now, there's the leaders, 99, Jeff Burton, and Ted Musgrave. And who's Roush pulling for? Do you suppose? <laughs> <laughs> and he's got Mark Martin back in seventh place. So first, second, and seventh for Jack Roush. But it's Jeff Burton who is leading this race. Musgrave, then Dale Jarrett, then Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, Bobby Hamilton, then uh, Mark Martin, Terry Labonte, John Andretti, and the 33 of Robert Presley. Right now, the Mark Martin, the other Jack Roush car, is in a pretty heated battle with Bobby Hamilton, the STP car. Passing Bobby Hillen there, who's running 29, three laps down. Hamilton is in sixth place. 
after all this pit stop, we still have 18 cars in the lead lap. And Ned, the record for cars in the lead lap here in the Pontiac Excitement 400 is 10 in 1990. So we are on our way to breaking that record, plus the speed record, which is 107.709. Look, look at this for the battle. Here is and Burke. Dale Jarrett is in that group as well. He's right behind. That's the third place car. I don't know who Jack Roush is pulling for, but I guarantee you saying, boy, please be careful. <laughs> don't take each other out, huh? Yeah. <laughs> One of that threesome we know he's not pulling for. Yeah, that's that 88. Dale ball. Jarrett, right. <laughs> you know, Dale Jarrett is on the winner's circle after we oh, here we go, Musgrave on the inside. Trying, trying. Whoop. That's Strickland there on the inside. This has been a great race. It has. This is really good racing. Meanwhile, as they followed the eight car of Hustrick in the last lap, you see Dale Jarrett has closed up right on the back bumper of Musgrave. There's first, second, and third right there. Dale Jarrett, by winning the Daytona 500, uh, got the 88 car on the winner's circle. That's an appearance uh, situation that NASCAR has. It's worth about $200,000 a year. Both the Roush cars, the 99 and 16, neither of those cars are on the winner's circle. So they would love to see one of those cars be able to pick up that 200 grand. Here's the speed that I referred to just a moment ago. The race record is 107.709. That is held by Davey Allison, who won here in 93, and we are at 107.747 at the moment. So we're on record speed, and we're going to set possibly a record for cars in the lead lap. Here is Labonte, Hamilton, and Schrader, and Ken Schrader. Uh, let's see, where is he? He's a lap down in 19. Yes, he is. see Hamilton as those Hendrick cars drive away from him. The 37 car now is in the same lap with 43 and has gone past him. He's got a top 10 finish going here, John Andretti does. He is eighth. And, and started nice. way, way back. Yeah, and the 90 car, by the way, there is 28th position, three laps down. Mike Wallace. Now, Kenny Wallace is just now going a lap down. He's a 17th place car as Jeff Parker just went around and coming off the turn two as we watch this battle here. Bobby Hamilton. That car was so strong in the first part of the race. Apparently, the racetrack has changed some, and, and his chassis is not doesn't like this racetrack that we're seeing here right now as good as it did earlier in the race. For second and third, 99, 16, 88. Kenny Wallace, 17th and number 81, a lap down. Pretty much a Ford show right now, isn't it? <laughs> now, we got to update Dale Earnhardt. We talked about him running slow there when we came back from the commercial break. He's picked back up and running okay. He dropped down to 15th position, but he's still in the lead lap. He's about, as Dale Jarrett tries to get around Ted Musgrave, he's uh, only about three and a half seconds in front of the leaders, Dale Earnhardt, but he's still in the lead lap. Four Fords up front, then a Chevy, then a Ford, then a Chevy, Ford, Pontiac, and Chevy. Musgrave watches as Dale Jarrett just drives away a car length or so. And Jarrett on his way to try to catch that 99 car of Jeff Burton. 338 laps completed out of 400. We're in the closing laps of the Pontiac Excitement 400. Right now, it's Jeff Burton up front. And there's your leader, Jeff Burton. There's second place, Dale Jarrett. I guess the... You know, Todd Parrott has been getting a lot of... Uh, recognition for the success that he's had with uh, Dale Jarrett this year. I guess we're going to start talking about his dad, aren't we, Ned? Yeah, I'll tell you, 
Todd Parrott, of course, we talked about the success that Rusty Wallace has had on short tracks. Of course, Todd Parrott had worked with Rusty for years and years and years. He brought a lot of that short, short track knowledge over to the Robert Gates Quality Care Ford team, and I think that's one reason that we're seeing Dale Jarrett run up front here today. That he said it was the first time he led a race here at Richmond. And also Buddy Parrott, who's the crew chief on the 99 car, worked with Rusty Wallace as well. So Absolutely. We're spreading the wealth all through the field. Let's talk about pit strategies from here on. We'll start with John Kernan. Bob, I tell you what, Buddy Parrott looks like he's extremely anxious to get this one over with, with this young driver out there. He came down off the box, talked to one of the NASCAR officials. I stopped him and said, can you make it the rest of the way without stopping? He said, yep, that's our plan. We don't plan on stopping one more time. We're going to the end. Let's go down to Bill Weber. Same strategy down here. Dale Jarrett, Todd Parrott, they're going to the finish. They're not going to stop. Todd sits high on the box, calling out lap times to his driver, watching the cars go around in circles. Got a visit from Larry McReynolds about 50 laps ago, a short conversation, and then Todd went right back to business. They think they're in good shape, good on the long runs. Open up right on the checkers. Further down pit road is Dr. Park. And we'll make it three in a row down here. Howard Comstock, the crew chief for Ted Buster, said, hey, our tires are going to be absolutely gone, but we have no choice. We want to win our first race for Musgrave. We will be slipping and sliding and dodging the concrete the last five laps. And and went on. It's out the window, Jerry. We got a caution. Daryl uh, Waltrip has crashed here on the front straightaway. Leaders coming off four. Leaders got it, leaders the 99. The 7 and the 29 are legal, Elbo. The 7 and the 29 are legal. Clean up truck, come on out and get ready to come over here. Big sweep truck, come on out. David Houston, NASCAR official, telling Elmo, the pace car drivers, we see Daryl Walter driving away with some damage to the Western Auto Chevrolet. And Bobby Hamilton was on pit road when the caution flag flew. He did not stop. He went through the pits and retained his position on the lead lap. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a break for him. Daryl was running in 20th position when the trouble happened. Let's see exactly what did. Looks like maybe somebody got into him. Who was that? Wow. Tell. Until we was. Anyway, we have a lot of activity on pit road building. Here's John Kernan. Well, Jeff Burton is in. They will change four tires. I haven't seen them make a chassis adjustment here in the second half of the race. Don't anticipate they'll need one now. They're finished around on the right side. Jack is down. Oh, it looks like the, the left front tire change of the hose gets caught momentarily under the front air dam. But now they'll come around just a little bit of a miscue right there. And Jared is in. Let's go down to Bill Weber's Jeff Burton's out. Flawless pit stop for the 88. Dale Jarrett beats out the 99 car. He's on his way. 16's on pit road, Jerry. And a flawless four-tire change. This Musgrave crew, they are jumping up and down and celebrating. What a tire change. 18.9 seconds. I had them on my clocks for four tires. And then that kind of change, guys, they have reason to celebrate. Well, that was a great pit stop, Jerry. No doubt. Anytime you get under 20 seconds now, the fact that they can't use, they can only use two air wrenches, that is a great pit stop. But there Jeff is, Gordon made a good one too, Benny. Yeah, he's the leader of the race right now. And there's the damage on Darrell Waltrip's car as he comes down pit road. And we'll take a look at what happened again. And it looks like it was Ward Burton that may have had contact with Darrell there coming out of turn four. Yes, he hit him uh, in the left rear, touched him in the left rear as he came off the corner. And as Darrell was trying to get straightened out, got into him again. So, there are pit stops being made, and the track is being cleaned up. Jeff Gordon has assumed the lead of this race, and we'll be back in just a moment. Parsons, Ned Jarrett, John Curtin, Bill Weber, and Jerry Punch back at Richmond International Raceway under caution because of an accident involving Darrell Waltrip. And then pit stops that have put Jeff Gordon up front, and this is how they completed their pit stops and came out of uh, the pits, and that's why they're running where they are. Here is Jeff's work being completed on the left side of the car. He's a champion in 1995. He gets that first pit, and we see that he goes across that white line, and that's a determinant factor. So Ted Musgrave will come across second, but it's Jeff Gordon in front. Jeff Burton came into the pits. The leader comes out fifth. Jarrett from second to third. Musgrave from third to second. Gordon made the big move upward from fourth to first. And Rusty Wallace made a move 
upward from fifth to fourth. Jerry? Remember, they had the smoke out of the right front of Earnhardt's car when he had melted the O-ring in the right front caliper, and the smoke was from the fact that the brake fluid was leaking out onto the hot caliper and creating the smoke. Now, once the fluid was all gone with dual calipers, he would only have rear brakes, but the smoke would go away. Now, they came down pit road, capped off the right front, filled the brake caliper, or, or the uh, back full of fluid, and now he'll have rear brakes and left front only. Take a look at the AutoZone off-track interval. Jeff Gordon and Jeff Burton. Take a look at that in just a moment and see that the sweeper is out on the racetrack and they're doing a pretty thorough job of getting this racetrack cleaned off and in good shape for the final few laps of this race. We'll take another break and be right back. Richmond International Raceway getting set for a restart. Now here is the off-track AutoZone interval. Jeff Gordon and Jeff Burton. Wow, look at the difference in that. Almost five seconds. Uh, and again, John mentioned that Jeff had a hose problem at the front of the car that uh, resulted in that or contributed to it at least. Yeah, I'm sure it did. Okay, now we're two abreast and getting set for a restart. And the crowd has not left. As a matter of fact, they are as uncertain as we are. Who has the best car right now? Because there are several that are still capable of winning as the green comes out and resumes the race on lap 359. There's still 14 cars on the lead lap. Maybe. It was a mess, though, over there. It was a mess. <laughs> if they keep running three abreast, there'll be another one, too. Meanwhile, as we watch this, Kyle Pitts, let's watch and we'll show you what we're talking about with Robert Presley. There we see the green car. He and Jeremy Mayfield make some contact, and Robert does a great job in saving that baby. Boy, that is a great job. I sure did. Okay, now. There he is, running with Sterling Marlin for 10th place. 10th and 11th, Presley and Marlin. And the question I've got now, Ned, you know, we've all, we've talked about how the 16, 99, 88, how much better they run in an, ex in an, in an, an extended period. He's for me to say, 40 laps, is that long enough for these cars to? Yeah, I think so. In, in fact, uh, uh, that's when when Burton and Jarrett seemed to be the best was after about, uh, after they run about 20 laps from there to about 60 laps is when they seem to really be the best. But right now, they're having trouble getting through some traffic. There is Ted Musgrave getting through the traffic. Now, Kenny Wallace on the bottom of the racetrack. Neil Jarrett comes along up top, and so does Jeff Burton. Look at Jarrett close in on Musgrave. The car leading the line at the moment, or at least he was until just seconds ago was Kyle Petty who did manage to get himself back onto the lead lap in 15th position but now Gordon in the back stretch has put a lap on him once again. And Kenny Wallace that on the inside there's his brother on the outside and once again here comes Musgrave. I tell you what that Musgrave to me looks hungry Ned. that 16 yeah. car looks hungry. Yeah he's hungry no doubt about it. Jeff Burton has passed Rusty Wallace since the restart. A field summary. Watch for your favorite driver and see where he is running at the moment. Now, clear racetrack in front of the leader, Jeff Gordon, with Ted Musgrave right behind. There comes Dale Jarrett and Jeff Burton. And Rusty Wallace not too far back. Rusty racing with his brother Kenny, but now he gets on by him. No problem. Martin comes along with Babylon Ford. Terry Labonte is the car directly behind the Babylon Ford. You're riding along with Mark Martin, the camera on the roof of his car. Terry Labonte, the Kellogg's car is behind. That's Rusty Wallace right in front. Rusty running in the fifth place. Martin is sixth and Terry Labonte is seventh. John Andretti running in eighth spot. 
then Bill Elliott ninth, and Robert Presley tenth. And there is John Andretti, and he might want to start all of his races back in uh, 38th position. Trust me, he don't. <laughs> no, he won't want to start. Even though he's having a great run here today. Sure has. He moved into the top 20 very quickly and has been in the top 10 just about all day. There is Jeff Gordon, and he told us on the NASCAR Today earlier before we uh, started our race coverage that he was ready to turn the season around, and he may be doing that this weekend. The 33 car of Presley is in the pits, giving up his 11th position to do so. Had a great run all day today, and here it is, just a few laps from the end, and looks like a flat tire. Left rear flat on the skull machine, and so... And, and that could have come from, as we see this battle between Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace, or as Mark gets around Rusty Wallace, that could have come from that little skirmish we saw, saw uh, Presley in over there. Could have uh, nicked the tire and caused it to go flat. And now he's going to lap down. And he's having trouble with the left front. They finally get it changed, and he goes back down pit road. He's going to be almost two laps down when he gets Whoa, back. Oh, we have there. a spin over in turn two. Elton El Sawyer. No caution. No caution. No. El oh, and and now, Earnhardt is fun. Now there'll be a caution. Uh, if it, well, I don't know. We'll see if he gets Earnhardt right comes down, down the right leader. the leader. No, oh, Dale Jarrett oh, almost makes man. contact with Musgrave. Man. Thank goodness for spotters, huh? Man. That was close. Dale Earnhardt has not had a DNF in his previous 17 spring races here at Richmond. Now then, who pits and who don't pit, Ned? Yeah, that's a good, good question. Let's go to the pits first and Jerry Punch. Guys, the reason Earnhardt had to spin the car, he didn't have any brakes, we were told. He had minimal to no brakes. It was a little bit of rear brakes when he came in the corner. The only way he could try to avoid those cars spinning, and Elton Sawyer was to loop the car himself. Now, Benny, to answer your question, I don't know. I, I don't believe those front runners will pit. They've only they've run, what, about 15 laps or something since they since they put those tires on. Of course, if Jeff Gordon does... Let's well, see. What are they going to do? It's a guessing game here now. Oh, Jeff faked him out. Yeah. So did Ted, but nobody's buying Now the guys in the back are going to oh, stop. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they got nothing to lose. Those are back with Elliott and Hamilton. No, he didn't stop either. Marlin. Here come Sterling Marlin, Ricky yeah. Rudd, and Bobby Hamilton. The cars, yeah. the last three cars on the lead lap, all are coming in pits. Yeah, like. that's marked on their part because they have nothing to lose. They can't lose so many positions back there. And They'll have fresh tires and might be able to pick up some position. Probably will. And Bobby Hamilton's STP Pontiac, we know how good that car is with fresh tires. So, mm. here comes Earnhardt down pit road. Jerry? They had told Bobby Hamilton there is no car in this racetrack better for 30 laps on fresh tires than your car. Unfortunately, the race is longer than 30 laps. Well, right now, it is not. The race will be for about 28 laps they go back in a moment and he will have four fresh Goodyear tires so what a run it should be Hamilton gets right side now left side tires and he is down to one. Hamilton moving back out so is Marlin and Ricky Rudd now here is Earnhardt's spin from his roof can Yeah, so he's had trouble up there, and I guess he had no brakes, so he just said, I better spin her out here and keep from running hit on him to somebody. So Dale Earnhardt goes further back down in the standings. He's now 34th, six laps down. Back in a moment. To rejoin us, it's Jeff Burton, Ted Musgrave, and uh, Dale Jarrett, first three, then Jeff Burton, and Mark Martin, and Rusty Wallace. to put a period on Dale Earnhardt. His last Richmond race that he finished lower than 11th was in 1983 and only two of the 34 races he's ever finished lower than 13th. But now Earnhardt is 34th, seven laps down as the attention goes to the front of the pack and Jeff Gordon, the defending NASCAR Winston Cup champion. He's pulled out by about three car lengths over Ted Musgrave. Musgrave, he's driving a little bit offensive and defensive because right behind him, there you see the 88 car of Dale Jarrett. Oh, and a 
a big spin in the backstretch. Two cars involved. Elton Sawyer and Ernie Irvin are at the inside of the racetrack in the backstretch. Sawyer is moving. Irvin isn't. Now he is. Caution flag is out. Here it is. We see a... Evidently, Ernie made some contact as he came off the second corner because that was water going down to his car. So Ernie Irvin is not having a good day. He's around 24th and is going to lose probably some more positions because of this accident in the backstretch with Elton Sawyer. Back in just a moment. Stay with us. NASCAR, celebrating 50 years in auto racing from 1948 to 1998. Well, if you like NASCAR Winston Cup racing, this is the place to be. ESPN2 and the NASCAR Marathon. If you like the ultimate in motorsports attractions, then this is the place to be, Daytona USA. The race we're watching on a marathon is the Pontiac Excitement 400 from March of 1996. Had a lot of cautions, Benny. We've mentioned how cold it is, but do, do the two really have any relation? I don't think so. I think that the caution flags of Richmond, just the third race of the season, is the drivers being so pumped up for this race. And it's a short track where they feel like they can touch somebody and get away with it. But sometimes when you touch, the guy in front does, in fact, go around. Now, the date of this spring race at Richmond has been changed, mainly because of weather, I think. I mean, folks, you can see just how cold it is how brutal it is on the competitors, the pit crews, and the fans. So next year in 1998, this race will be run in June. So way to go, Richmond. All right, let's go back for the finish now of the Pontiac Excitement 400, March 3rd, 1996. We're looking back from the Pontiac pace car to Jeff Gordon on the left and uh, Kenny Schrader on the right, Schrader is a lap down in 14th. Jeff Gordon is the leader of the race, and we are about to go green once again. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, the Western Auto Mechanic of the race for the, for the Pontiac Excitement 400 has been announced, and it's Ed Guzzo, who is the chief mechanic. There is Ed right there holding the hand up so he can see with the sun in his eyes. Ed Guzzo with the car number 24, Jeff Gordon, our leader, who takes the green flag on the restart. 18 laps to go. Man, I tell you what, folks. Let me tell you, let me just tell you how hard they're. I can tell you how hard they're racing right now. And I tell you, right there's some class by Kenny Schrader. He could have affected the outcome of this race right there. He was on the inside of his teammate Jeff Gordon. He he stayed down on the inside, let Dale Jarrett and Ted Musgrave go by. And now Jarrett's trying to move by Ted Musgrave down on the inside to take over the second position. But Schrader definitely could have affected the outcome of this race, but he said, I'm gonna let them race for it. Good battle here for second spot. Jarrett is to the inside in 88. Musgrave outside in 16. Jarrett is going to get the position coming off corner number four. Dale Jarrett, the co-points leader going into this event with Dale Earnhardt, is going to pick up some major points today. And he could pick up a win. He's only about seven or eight car lengths behind the leader, Jeff Gordon. Parrott down on pit road is <laughs> riding every inch with his driver Dale Jarrett. I am too. Yes, <laughs> I bet you are. <laughs> there he watches him go down in turn one. Now he's got to wait that 10 or 15 seconds till he get back. <laughs> it seems like an Thanks. eternity. Doesn't yeah. It? He's watching that clock, rocking those cars. Todd Parrott that you're seeing in the inset. Here he comes. Now you can see him again. I don't know if he's gaining any on Gordon or not. Gordon's car is good right now. Here's more from Bill Weber. I talked to Todd just before they went back green. I said, this is going to hurt you. You wanted the longer runs. He goes, that's right. But he goes, look at this. And he pointed at the big picture where they were in the running order and where the three car was in the running order. So if they don't get the win here today, they're looking at points, points, even though it's only race number three. Jeff Gordon has led 100. And here's trouble here on the front straightaway. Jeff Bodine, Dave Marcus is up against the wall. I think Jimmy Spencer is also involved. So we went so long without any cautions or any accidents, and now we've had a rash of them here in the last few laps. As Dave Marcus still, now he begins to roll away from where he stopped just past the start-finish line. 
Now we could get down in the situation here within 10 laps to go when the when the race is restarted, which would mean a single file restart. And that will happen because right the now there's only 12 cars, 12 laps left. Caution is out once again here at Richmond International Raceway in the closing stages of the Pontiac Excitement 400. Didn't even run a full lap under green till we had another crash. This one up on turn number three, bringing out the eighth caution of the afternoon. And this would involve a couple of cars. The guy that got the worst into the deal was Michael Waltrip, who spun up and hit the wall in turn three and stayed there long enough to bring out the flag. You see Jimmy Spencer, the Smoke and Joe car involved. As he goes around, he continues on. In the 75 car. Morgan Shepard got through there, I believe, didn't he, Benny? Elsewhere on the track, Bobby Hamilton's roof cam. Whoops. A little tap to John, John Andretti there. Oh, nice save by John. <laughs> and now we are within 10 laps, so it'll be a single file restart. They're checking the track over to determine when we can go green. We'll take another break and be back for the restart in a moment. Start here at Richmond. The Pontiac pace car pulls off. Jeff Gordon brings them around corner number four. They get the green. That's the completion of lap 395. We restart on 396. It's Gordon, Jarrett, Musgrave, Burton, Martin, Wallace, Labonte, Andretti. And there's a big mess back for the rest with Terry Labonte, John Andretti, and Bobby Hamilton. Four laps to go for Jeff Gordon. Ooh. Close racing there between John Andretti and Terry Labonte. They're running seventh and eighth. Hamilton goes by the car, takes that spot away. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon pulled out to about a five-car length advantage on Dale Jarrett. And here's Jeff Burton trying to pass Ted Musgrave for the third position. Teammates racing against each other for third. Musgrave able to hold him off at the moment, although Burton has a good inside position on him as they come out of the second corner. Gordon, Gordon's car is strong coming off the of turn two. He really gets a bite coming off of that turn and pulls away. This is Jeff's seventh race here at Richmond as we continue to watch this battle between Burton and Musgrave. His finishes, 10th, 6th, 3rd, 2nd, 36th a year ago at this time. He finished 6th here in the fall race. There's the three Roush cars right together, 3rd, 4th, and 5th. How about that? Up front, though, it's Gordon and Jarrett. As the white flag is coming out, and Jeff Gordon, the defending NASCAR Winston Cup champion, who has gotten off to a horrible start in 1996, is about to win his first race of the year if he can hold off Jarrett for another half lap. And Bobby Hamilton was able to get by Rusty Wallace back for the sixth spot. Here we come. Here comes the checkered flag. It's going to be Jeff Gordon winning. Jarrett second. Third goes to Musgrave. Then Burton. And then Mark Martin followed by Bobby Hamilton and then Rusty Wallace. Wow, how about that? So Jeff Gordon does get everything untracked here at the Richmond Raceway. It's his 10th career win, his last since Dover, nine races ago. Jeff Gordon pulls into victory lane and gets the monkey off of his back for 1996. Actually, it started in 1995. His average finishing position in the last six race, races prior to today, 28th. What is this all about? Is Kyle Petty uh, is down against the inside of the track? And who, Hamilton? Bobby Hamilton, Hamilton yeah. Hmm. Oh, well. <laughs> We'll check on that as Jeff Gordon takes off the helmet and revisits Victory Lane for the first time since Dover of last year. This is his second short track win. He also won at Bristol last year. Brought Chevy home in front of five Fords and led 124 of the 400 laps here at Richmond International Raceway. 
Well, let's go down now for our McDonald's winner circle interview. Here's Jerry Punch. And, and Ray Everham comes over and gives a big congratulations to his young driver. They talk about, hey, Ray said, I told you, if we just be patient, just be patient, we'll be there. As we're ready now as Jeff Gordon gets ready to climb out of the car, and the fans have crowded to the fences to hear. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Jeffrey, oh, man, congratulations. Oh, he's not going to get, this guy will never get caught for winning a race. Jeff, congratulations on a great effort. Oh, thank you, Jerry. We needed this so bad. Uh, you know, it's been a, a tough couple races. Uh, you know, we knew we had a lot of races left to go. And, man, I tell you, I've been, I've been, you know, seeing the guys more. Uh, I wanted to make sure their morale wasn't getting down. I mean, I'm real. Really interested in, you know, making sure this team doesn't come into this year and, and fall on its face. And, and these guys did a heck of a job. I got to say thanks to DuPont Automotive Finishes. And these Goodyear tires are great today also. Uh, you know, it was just a, a wonderful day. And Quaker State, our new sponsor. This, this is a day we've been looking for for a little while here. And we've been searching. And I tell you, it, it feels so good to be able to do this today. These guys, they needed it. I needed it. Uh, it this, this is a refreshing feeling. About halfway through the race, Rick Hendrick turned to me and said, that young man is showing so much maturity by not using up the race car and being patient. Well, we had a great car on a long run. And, you know, at the beginning, the only, we only had to deal with a couple of cars. Then all of a sudden, these Fords come out of nowhere, the 99 and the 88. I, I, I was like, man, what has happened? Because, And then I come on the race. I said, have we slowed down or have they speed up? They said, no, they, they've gotten faster. So I knew on a long run we'd still reel them in, and, and that's... That's the effort that, that Ray Evernham, these uh, Rainbow Warriors, and myself, we all put in all day yesterday in practice. We knew we had a good car, uh, you know, and, and we came here and, and we did the best that we could with it. And uh, today, you know, having a win, I, I got to thank God. This uh, God has been with me uh, through the ups and the downs. And uh, it was difficult for two races to finish uh, back in the 40th uh, place uh, back there anyway. And uh, I think that he's really been with me, especially today. And that's bad. That's all history, right? It's all gone. 40 second and 40, that's all history. Well, we moved up quite a bit in points anyway. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Oh, the monkey's off their back as he gets a big hug from Carl and Rick Hendrick and Jeff Gordon back in victory lane here in 1996. Now, let's show you what resulted in what we saw just a few minutes ago. Uh, as here is John Andretti coming up and giving Bobby Hamilton a bit of a tap there on the uh, rear of the car and then he drives up beside him and gives him another little nudge and Hamilton stops and said what's going on here John I guess <laughs> and they talked about it by the way John uh, slipped out to 12th at the line and Hamilton wound up in sixth position so uh, that was a little skirmish that occurred after the checkered flag had come out and Kyle Pett he stops to see what's happening uh, with his dad's that's, car. that's what Kyle stopped for okay well, we're going to take a break and be back with more from Richmond as we wrap things up here in the Pontiac Excitement 400, won by Jeff Gordon. And official results of this race here this afternoon, which was a great one. 13 cars ended up on the lead lap, and uh, Ned Dale's going the wrong way. First at uh, Daytona, second at Rockingham, third here today. I believe he'll take it, though. That's, that's not bad. bad not no. a bad start. It, it says sure second on that thing that I'm looking at. Oh, okay. What did he say? That's right. He said third. Oh, I got some, okay. I got some bad information. All right, he finished second. <laughs> So he's just staying the same as last week. And, and I tell you what, he'll take second every race from here Absolutely. on out. He'd win the championship if he could do that. <laughs> See, Darrell Waltrip, after his contact with the wall, is back in 26th spot. Elton Sawyer in 30th. I'll bet he had a good run. And only two cars were out of the race at the uh, drop of the checkered flag. Ernie Irvin and Wally Dallenbach, who was out very, very early. Well, we talked about Dale Jarrett. When we come back here to Richmond, we will talk to J Dale because he is the new leader in the point standings of the NASCAR Winston Cup Series in 96. International Raceway by taking a look at the point standings after three races. It is Dale Jarrett on top now of Jeff Burton by 86 points. Here is Bill Weber with the points leader. And he has run the gauntlet of handshakes and photographs. That's good for the Winston Cup points leader. I know you won a victory lane today, but you needed a longer run. Yeah, we did. Uh, the car seemed to work better after we ran 15 or 18 laps. And 
that's the characteristics of this car. It was the same way last year when I drove it, but uh, it was awesome today. It was a lot of fun. This, this is great. We've had a chance to win every race that we've been in this year, and there's nothing like that. I can't say enough about Todd and, and all the guys on the team, the work that they performed, and, and Robert Yates and Doug uh, with the engines and, and Larry for his guidance here. So everything's going well for the Ford Quality Care Ford Credit team, and uh, see if we can keep it going while we've got it. Yeah, and a long string of Fords behind the winner today. Dale Jarrett comes home second. Now to Dr. Punch. Bobby Hamilton finishes six, and Bobby, this team needed this shot in the arm. What a run for you today. We did. You know, we had a bad week last week, and uh, we just put it all behind us, Jerry. And what makes us feel good is we didn't let any of that other stuff bother us. You know, we come and qualified good and raced good, led a lot of laps today. And uh, we just gave up on long runs, and that's generally our strong suit. You know, we missed it a little bit on long runs. And I tried to run a place fast enough where it worked other guys to death, but two or three of them wasn't as smarter than that. They wouldn't do it, you know. So, uh, like I said, we was able to lead a lot of, a lot of the laps, and... Uh, Good day for STP and Ferguson, man. We had a blast out there. This was good short track racing. Speaking of short track racing, what happened between you and John Andretti? We saw some bumping back and forth. Well, I don't know, two or three laps to go, you know. We went in the corner, it all stacked up, and I, I got into him a little bit. God forbid that happened to me 20 times in that run, you know. They was just stacked up so bad. And uh, the next lap, I got by him, and I guess he didn't like it when we got together, you know. But, uh, man, that just happens, and uh, I sort of... You know, a lot of things happened last year between me and him that I never acknowledged or anything. And uh, we was just racing, man. We was just racing. And he didn't like it. At the end, after the checker flag flew, he hit me once. And I thought he was congratulating me or something. I was waiting. He ran back and hit me again. And I locked the brakes down. And it's a pretty day out today. And I was going to get out. I got out. I was going to talk about the weather. But he took off to the garage. I don't know what his hurry was. <laughs> Bobby Hamilton finishes six, guys. <laughs> I tell you, I love the way that man puts things. <laughs> he is a good with words. Jeff Gordon wins here today. By the way, he moves into 24th in the uh, point and 27th in the point standings, 265 behind the leader, Dale Jarrett. We'll be back with more in just a moment. First race of 1996 here today in the Pontiac Excitement 400 at Richmond International Raceway. We will be in Atlanta next weekend for Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, John Kernan, Bill Weber, and Dr. Jerry Punch. This is Bob Jenkins. So long, everyone. Oh, man, I'm not cold. Oh, you can, you can get cold.